Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Good morning and welcome to Bassmaster Live. Welcome to this place, Lake Murray. Where have you been, Lake Murray, for the past dozen years? What a place. What a venue for this third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Marathon Bassmaster Elite here at wonderful Lake Murray. They really, really caught them yesterday. We had a great day of fishing. These guys are the best in the business. Cannot wait, Mark Zona, to see what is going to happen out there today. I think we have reason to be very excited. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. And the great thing about Lake Murray right now, we've talked about certain lakes that we have covered throughout the last 20 years together. Lakes that are absolutely peaking at the top of their performance. And that is exactly what we got to see through Lake Murray yesterday. And the great thing about it is so many things going on. We are going to see a lot of fish catches today, but little, little secrets to this herring spawn. We're going to be able to let some of that out from our leaders that filled us in yesterday after the weigh-in. Boy, the, the fish catching was phenomenal. 16 plus, 16 limits of 20 pounds or more. Just a tremendous, tremendous day on the water for these 103 anglers. The full field will be fishing again today. And we just can't wait to see what is in store as they continue to unlock the, uh, the mystery, the puzzle that is Lake Murray. <laughs> we are seeing plenty of them. There's our leaderboard as it stands right now. Mike Iaconelli, good day for the the, the celebrated veteran yesterday, Matt Robertson, a great day, a leading day yesterday with over 25 pounds of fish and on it goes down through the field. Took a 17 pounds and a half almost just to make the top 50 and that's what you have to do today. And we had a great day, of course. Uh, when we got to the weigh-in, I'll tell you what, we saw some great things. Among them, a 22-pound effort by Brandon Lester and he's ready to go today. I feel good. We'll see. Here's the deal, man. The weather's good. The fishing's good. It's not every week that you get a tournament like this. You know, our first few tournaments of the year, we had cold fronts, brutal conditions. We're just going to go have some fun today. Those are the best days. You know, we had a good day. We had 22 pounds and some change yesterday. Um, had two good bites. So that's really what put me over that to get to that 22 pound mark. You know, the goal was to be consistent every single day. You know, I didn't think I could catch a 25, 26 pound bag, a crazy bag. The goal was just catch 18 to 20 somewhere in there every single day and see where that puts you. And so, hey, we're just gonna go fishing today, have fun. We got the long day, we're about 100, and we're not doing until 4.30. So we're just gonna take our time and go fishing and feel the day out. We're gonna kind of change up how we ran things yesterday. Um, my morning was pretty slow, so that's why we're gonna kind of change things up, start somewhere else and kind of go from there and see what happens. Day two, and um, yeah, we still just putting pieces of the puzzle together. Um, happened pretty quick yesterday, so you know I feel like we, we we know where to do that at. But it's just being able to keep that bite consistent throughout the day is probably going to be my biggest challenge. Um, and really, the the mornings have been a been a struggle. It seems like for me. So if we can get something before eight or nine o'clock, it's going to be a bonus. And then you know, hopefully put ourselves around some fish in the afternoon and if they're willing to bite, we're willing to catch them. Day two on Lake Murray here, Bassmaster Elite Series, and uh, yeah, we're leading it, leading it, and we're just gonna go out there and uh, go fishing again, and we're gonna hopefully we see some uh, five to seven pounders eating top water, man. I'm super excited. Uh, I don't think it'll get real good till a little later in the day, but Man, you ain't seen nothing until you've seen one of them big girls eat that top water, man. It's unreal. These fish here are kind of unique. They don't stay long. They come up and they do their thing and they get gone. Matter of fact, one of the big females I caught yesterday was actually done in about 20 yards off the bed and I caught her on a, a waggy rig trick stick. But um, we're gonna do a little bit different this morning. We're gonna start on the shad spawn, heron spawn deal and run some points till the sun gets up. Then we're gonna go on a, a grown man Easter egg hunt, and try to find five big ones. Um, it's a lot of fun doing what I'm doing. Um, it's my favorite way to fish. So either way it turns out, we're gonna have a good time today. Some thoughts and a lot of enthusiasm from among the six anglers we'll be in the boat with all day long. Welcome to Bassmaster Live. Big day, second day of action here from Lake Murray. 
Good, good stuff. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon for this Marathon Bassmaster Elite from South Carolina. Ronnie Moore, Mike Such, Sue Khan, and Mark Zona Z. I, I think we we saw these guys start to figure out the puzzle yesterday. They're certainly not having any trouble seeing a bunch of fish out there. Are we going to see some e even more expanded, enhanced performances today? Well, the the one thing to kind of watch throughout day number two is is there are a lot of fish. Here's what is kind of leaving the guys like Drew Benton that relied on spawning largemouth. That is kind of going away uh, for the simple fact they just don't stay long enough to say, yeah, I've got 10 marked on beds for tomorrow. He has a lot of fish marked on beds, but they're not good ones, Tommy. But here's what is coming now. We got to see this a little bit with Shane LeHue later yesterday is that afternoon topwater bite not necessarily early in the morning but in the afternoon jason williamson said when that water temp starts to get up a degree or two that's when that herring bite and shad spawn bite kind of heats up a little bit and matt robertson said look i had a horrible morning with some mechanical issues but i am around a lot of fish and i'm talking five to seven pounders absolutely crashing the surface so going to be a fun day on Bassmaster Live. Absolutely. So much looking forward to it. You could tell from the anglers, they're, they're very much looking forward to it as well. By so many measurements, Ronnie Moore, this is the most fish catching tournament we have had this year, and we've been to some great places. A lot of reports coming into this event was this could be the best southern largemouth, you know, lake in the in the country for tournaments this year with how it's fishing. It's It's been said like it's the Lake St. Clair, Lake Champlain of the North. That's what it's fishing like right now. 17.5 just to make the top 50. And what's bad or what's good is that the weather isn't even ideal for for the morning time bite. And that's normally when you make you get right in a hurry is in the morning. That didn't happen yesterday. If we get that this weekend, it could really explode for some people trying to make up some ground for sure. Such, what's got you fired up this morning? Well, the, the, the numbers of fish, 97 limits, 1,710 fish. The, the number of limits, 1,710 pounds of fish caught, the average is three pounds, six ounces. All right. Is, well, we are ready to go. We're, we're getting ready. We're, we're getting there. That we're is live. for sure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, what a weigh-in we had yesterday. Take a look at some of these limits that were brought in. Oh, Brandon yeah. Cobb there with 20 and a half pounds. Kind of got things kicked up. And how about Brock Mosley? Uh, we did not see him showing up on, uh, on uh, uh, Bass Track yesterday, but he came in with big ones, he. I mean, a, a beautiful day one looking at Daryl Gleason getting off on the right start here with 21 pounds. And, you know, I was kind of scoffed at yesterday afternoon when I said, I think we got potential to have bigger weights here by the end of this tournament than Santee Cooper by you and Ron. Well, Moore. I don't know. No, 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 no. Good <laughs> about it. But really, hey, looking at a lot of these fish, looking at Brandon Lester here, big, big weights, especially for the majority of the fish that were on the stage yesterday with Dave Mercer. A lot of long spawned out females. Look for a lot more of that today, day number two. And we just saw our rookie of the year leader, Kyoya Fujita, big day for him. As well for Patrick Walters, 22 pounds and 11 ounces. You can tell he cannot wait to get out there and get started today. Drew Benton looking super confident as always. He's uh, one of his elements, as you say, Mark Zona, going away. But Matt Robertson, 25 pounds plus. We will have fun with him in the boat today. No doubt about it. Take a look at our unlock the lake here, Lake Murray, and about 50,000 acres. But here's the one thing, and we talked about this yesterday on Bassmaster Live. Taking a look at our takeoff right there from kind of mid to upper end of the lake here on Minn Kota, unlock the lake. Drear Island State Park is our takeoff, and really from there to the dam, the right-hand side of your screen, biggest player so far in this tournament, and the majority of the big bags yesterday was those herring spawn fish that were caught near the main lake. Not a lot of fish caught way back in the creeks. And you gotta say, guys like Drew Benton, he's kind of scrambling for the simple fact a lot of what he caught yesterday, he looked at him and said, there are just not a lot of big large mouth spawning. And when they do spawn, they're there for a couple hours and then they're back eating. So really looking from Deer, Deer Island State Park to the dam, that's the biggest player so far in your Minn Kota, unlock the lake and head on the water earlier with Hunter Shryock.
No, oh, please, 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 watch, watch the camera. One down. Hey, let's go, boy. Let's get us some. Tommy, that's the morning, I'm working on my electronics. Look at this fish. <laughs> While I'm palming oh, a five wait. pounder, you gotta love that. Right. That's awesome. Oh. Lake Murray. I'm Murray tweaking my awesome. graph. <laughs> I think that's a five. We're gonna put a call tag on her because it's gonna be a good day. said early today, if I get something going doctor, early, it's boy. gonna be a good day, and he has well, fulfilled that already. She had me pegged for like five seconds. After Walter's hooked up. There we go. <laughs> Got him, Ooh. That was close, wasn't it? That's how you get started, though. That's how you get started. Hey, we're fishing for five, we're not fishing for 20. He came off in midair. You wanna talk about dumb? Do that one more time, you get fired up in the morning. I told you, you had to take the hoodie off. I almost wasn't gonna make that cast and he freaking smoked it. Ooh. All right, I now can't feel my legs. That's why we keep throwing this thing. It's, you don't get a lot of bites, but when you get one, he's a donkey. Won himself college national championship here at Lake Murray. Got that on his resume and pretty excited today, obviously. Yeah, no doubt, Tommy. And the one thing he said he's looking for and he's going to get it tomorrow is wind. A lot of the anglers waiting for those fronts to push in tomorrow, which could be on FS1 the best fishing of the week. And Lester, what a great year for him last year, notching his first elite series victory, second place in aggressive angler of the year points. What a fat one. Gosh, look at him blowing up on the bank. That's a big one. Gotta get in there. Caught three herring fish yesterday, two off beds. 22 pounds, that's pretty strong. That's the second time he's done that, that's a big son of a gun. Uh, it's not. Wish I could see what that drone's seeing. Number one, just a little bitty one. Started to grab him, but I was like, he's just a two and a half pounder. Yep, that's what I thought. Got to start somewhere. And he was in the sun, he was right there, so. All right, let's go catch another one. We're gonna crank up and run to the next one. Mm. 
Kubent making the comment. He is going to have to learn the herring deal on the fly. So he really doesn't know what are the correct points, what are the correct humps that that goes down on just because he concentrated so much on day number one on spawning largemouth. Three of the bass that he caught on day one locked on beds and said he's going to kind of he said that earlier in the Facebook Live show with Ronnie and Such that he's going to have to find the Easter eggs as he goes along. Keep blowing. Big one to start the day. Big one. Come on, baby. Don't jump, don't jump, don't, don't, don't. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Come on. Not a big one. Looked big whenever she blew up. Smallest one I've caught here. We'll take it though. All five bass on day one came on a Berkeley cane walker. Then he got to see yesterday. a lot more. I ain't too worried about it. She's gonna get better later in the day. Beating the paint off this thing, buddy. That's what I like. Only had three little ones after three hours of fishing yesterday, and then it happened pretty quick for Matt Robertson. Yeah, and, and Tommy, really similar to Shane LeHue, he said all of these fish that blew up on that cane walker, all the bass that he weighed in, he would just wait. He wouldn't even fish until these fish would blow up. And Shane LaHue said that absolutely that the same thing. Here. Whatever. Pharrell thought that was a five pounder. The Livesey has an early limit. Well, I should have known it wasn't a five pounder because it didn't sound like a nuclear bomb going off. Jumping 51st to second, Lee Livesey. scary. <laughs> Oh, small for Judah. 14 inches of length limit <clears throat> to be a legal keeper. And Tommy, here's the information Ronnie and I were texting back and forth last night. A little bit of a, a little bit of a language barrier. Getting some information from Fujita. We uh, we got to talk to Sago a little bit, and Sago said, ah, "You're not going to get much information from Koya Fujita ever." <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind of to himself a little bit. Well, we're hungry for a little bit. About him. We are. The only thing we know, he's kind of like Ivan Drago from Rocky Four. What? A lot of people say he's really good, but that's about all we know. He, he served notice of that at Seminole, second place, so uh, that's pretty strong. Sago second said alley. that uh, Kyoya only responds to him when Kyoya wants a photo that Sago is taking. <laughs> that Kyoya has so many people texting him that he doesn't bother reaching out to others. And so uh, we've got, you know, he's going to be yes. fishing like we expect, you know, maybe light line finesse stuff mm -hmm. in that mid depth range, that six to, you know, 15 or something like that, depending on where he's Which at. Which is interesting. Yeah, it's a little bit, we didn't see many anglers doing that, just a few yesterday. And, be interesting to see what he puts on his jig head that he throws out there, whether it's a Dimiki style or if it's a swim bait style reeling type I don't approach. know that we're going to get a look at that, Ronnie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All of our six anglers that we have uh, cameras in the boats with today oh, yeah. have uh, put keepers in the live well already. That's a good start. Takes a lot of great timing and patience to uh, execute some of these approaches that are going on out there today, but the man on top has he spent some time on top yesterday. Mike Iaconelli, the new uh, Hall of Famer out there having a great season so far this year. Lee Livesey, as Such mentioned, with a big, big limit in the boat early on today. Brandon Lester, we just saw him 
catching a good, good keeper there. Jamie Hartman we haven't heard from in a while. Be fun to catch up with him today. We are off to a great start, and we will be right back. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. First place with 25 pounds, eight ounces. What's up, guys? Uh, had a little slow start to the day, but uh, man, the Berkeley Cane Walker came through us, came through for us uh, in the last half of the day and caught every bass we weighed in on it. As you can see, she's got some wear and she's been eat up. And uh, throwing it on a 6 8 ugly stick, and Abby Garcia, real man, just uh, running and gunning, doing what, fishing how we like to fish. Our leader from yesterday, Matt Robertson, talking about the Bass Pro Shop's top lures, what got him on top yesterday. We have got action going out with our full field here at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. 12 years since the elites have been here, but this is a different lake than when we were here back in 2011 and 2008 before that. Mike Iaconelli, though, is the man on top of it now. Quick limit in the boat for him on this morning. Ditto for Lee Livesey and Jamie Harton. Drew Benton has just added another one, so things are changing. Let's get out on the lake, and uh, we're going to get out to Drew Benton, as a matter of fact, right now. He uh, took one off the bed earlier, and uh, we're going to see some more of that action on the way. And talking to Drew Benton a little bit after the weigh-in yesterday, one of the things he said, man, there are still a lot of bass that are locked on, but definitely not the right ones. And he's trying to keep himself in a certain zone of the lake that's a little bit cooler than the rest of the lake. A lot of Lake Murray is 67 to 71 degrees, but in a little certain sections, we talked about that with Clark Wendelin, and Wendelin saying it was key to stay in that 60 to 62 degree range a little bit closer to the main lake. I think if they're garden fry, they'd bite something like that. Just like that. Come on, don't fight too much. Got all the meat hooks in him. Ugh. Try not to get hooked in my hand. I knew I had all of them in him. See, I think he's guarding fry up there. Throw something a little bit more aggressive on him and they'll sometimes hit it. That wacky worm sometimes just ain't, ain't enough to get him to move. That's more like it. Well, that's interesting being a fry garter and talk to Hackney about that a little bit before this tournament. This lake has really, really yeah. big, big males in it compared to other lakes that we fish this time of year where a three pound male is a big one. Not the case on Lake Murray. I told him I see them up there every day I come by here. They gotta be garden fry or something. Maybe I need to throw something wild over them. <laughs> I had one bite the wacky, but it didn't it didn't eat it. Let's see. 
Good look at Drew Benton's environs there. 50,000 acres worth of Lake Murray. Some of these things can be a downright pain to catch. <laughs> I don't know, I'm getting some of them you pitch in there first flip. If I knew exactly how big this one was, I know how much time to spend on it, but. It's still early, so we're gonna fish for it. What is it? <laughs> Fix and start roughing it up a little bit. If he ain't gonna bite, he ain't gonna sit there. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to see it either. Yeah. Oh, I think you might have bit it just then. Not, not 100%. <laughs> My line went limp just for a second. Either blew at it or he bit at it. Yep. Okay. See that one up there? Hard to see which way they're. See what I'm saying? So fast. Like, I need them to be, like, blowing the herring and missing it, not, like, eating it or something. I don't know. Like, it wants to play the game, which I like. As you can see, beautiful day out there today, TH Marine Weather Watch. It's a high of 85, pretty much carbon copy of yesterday, low 63, a little warmer night, as a matter of fact, tonight. Wind 5 to 10. Got to, tomorrow's the big weather change, Z, with some storms possible. Yes. Yeah, I think looking at that TH Marine Weather Watch, tomorrow is the day a lot of these anglers wait for that wind to really get these shallow areas where these herring are at, fire in and one common theme looking at that weather, we're going to kind of get a little bit of lower temps in the 40s going into championship Sunday. Might affect it a little bit to where that afternoon bite fires again, but really on Sunday, perfect fishing weather. And talking to a lot of the guys, Patrick Walters, Shane LeHue, Matt Robertson, Tommy, this is the one thing that they'll all say where, where these herring are spawning on these points and we got to see this with LaHue and LaHue fishing a way bigger area yesterday if you turned in I'm tuned in on Bassmaster Live is these wolf packs a large mouth will use spot on a spot sweet spots that they'll just sit they'll kind of bunker in and wait for those herring to go by and what's interesting is Patrick Walter saying they will use those same sweet spots year after year really? after year which is yeah, it's very eerily similar to how smallmouth use certain boulders or clusters of shallow rock. And and he said it's very consistent when you find one of those sweet spots that, that they'll basically sit and wait to ambush herring. He said they will go at, now they'll disperse when they're chasing the herring, but they'll go right back to that exact spot, which could really be only a five foot in radius area housing you know five to ten big bass about that. but that was the that was the common theme of a lot of your leaders that concentrated on the herring deal was really knowing where those fish set up and then when they go to feed and then where they come ex right back to after they attack the herring a lot of fun watching shane like you yesterday <laughs> I really don't like all them bubbles up there. He found that spot. And then he said, like it doesn't that. happen until the herring show up. Like <laughs> That's, you can't get much going yeah, until you get there. And the other thing that Robertson said was what Williamson talked about before this event, that the topwater bite, and we got to see it yesterday, got so good in the afternoon. And Robertson said a lot of these areas that he's concentrating on had a lot of pressure early from other competitors, from a lot of locals. And then a lot of those anglers went sight fishing. He said that was when the best bite happened mm. yesterday was from 11 o'clock on.
Matt Robertson, third year this with the Elite Series. State. They will about noon. Two top fives last year. They're seeing a lot of them, that is for sure. Oh, yeah. A lot of fish cruising up shallow. Got a little bit of love right there. A lot of fry garden going on. We got to see that yesterday with Tyler Rivette. Couple fry garters early this morning with Drew Benton. And those images are really the whole story of what is going on on Lake Murray right now. Fish spawning, fry guarding, and basically just attacking shad and herring all day long. Photographers have been working overtime to, well in advance of the tournament to get at this stuff. That's the biggest thing, Tommy Z, is that these fish, sometimes some lakes go up there and spawn and then they have a reason to go way offshore, you know, maybe the Tennessee River lakes, but with the shad spawn, the herring spawn, fry garters, whatever, everything that moves and that fish want to be at is in that 10 foot or less range right now. So these fish, you're kind of having a perfect storm where a big percentage of Lake Murray's bass are in an attainable, catchable zone uh, the last couple days. Yeah, and that really, that, that last shot of that five or six pounder just kind of up shallow next to Gussie's boat the day before the tournament began, just kind of easing around, chasing a herring. That's the whole story. Got a little bonus coverage for you here. I don't have to buy coffee the rest of my life. Be honest. Thanks for buying coffee. Yes, hi. Donuts? Yes, I'm calling about sponsorship, hon. I would like free coffee for the rest of my life. Thank you. Oh, he is feeling it. Mike Iconelli, can you kind of dial us in? Are, are you concentrating on just a couple key shallow areas or are you running a lot of different areas throughout the day? Hi, Z, good morning. Love you, miss you. Um, here you go, here's what's going on. I told my partner this morning, <clears throat> my goal today is to fish 50 spots. Um, it's really more of a pattern thing but there's elements that I'm finding that are really key. And yesterday I fished way too slow, came in, saw the weights, knew I made a mistake. Today, my goal is 50. We're six spots in, that's all we are. So we got a lot of work to do today. But here's the magic combination, and I'm gonna give it to you, it's really easy. Um, water clarity. I need some stain for the water. For whatever reason, the midsection of the lake right now has stain, that's really important. So it can't be too clean and it can't be dirty. Number two, got to have a hard bottom, uh, whether it's shell or natural rock, um, gravel, has to be a hard bottom. And then, you know, the, the last element, and that's one everybody knows about, is the presence of herring. So, you know, when I cast this lure um, and I reel it back, if I don't see herring following it on four or five casts, I go. But when I see herring following it, they're there. Trust me, they're there. And... Um, Really, I'm keeping it pretty simple on my approach this week. I'm, I'm catching them on a crankbait and a jerkbait. And if that slows down a little bit, I'm throwing a drop shot and a wacky rig. Nothing crazy, real simple, uh, catching a lot of fish. And if anything, that's going to be my downfall. Um, a lot of two to three pounders. But those fours, fives, they've been harder to catch for me. Mike, uh, Tommy and I actually talked about this yesterday because Tommy got to witness this. This is actually the lake where you kicked me out of your boat. Do you feel like <laughs> we have matured since then, Mike? <laughs> oh, I, I have. You, you know that I was in the wrong on that, and I know I know I've apologized already, but I want to do it now publicly. <laughs> Please, so, so. I'm an angry Italian, and it was not you; it was all me, and I apologize for that. But I'm older and wiser. My testosterone levels are way down, so that wouldn't happen today. I don't believe that. Mike, dial in. Th these, herring, <laughs> these herring these herring, fish, talk about the wolf packs, how they have little stop signs where they kind of almost lazily wait to attack the herring instead of 
really getting aggressive. They kind of just sit around and wait. They do. They sit and wait because they know sooner or later the herring are going to come by or get pushed to them. We just saw a loon go past right before we went live. And when that loon came past, I said, it's going to happen. And five minutes after that, I caught a good one. And, you know, so those herring pushes, they can just wait. And once again, the magic element, if you're watching at home, hard bottom, hard bottom, hard bottom. Mike Iaconelli, thank you so much. So much fun watching the, the numbers Beautiful. that you're putting in the boat here. And we will be in touch with our leader as much as we can during the course of the next few hours here. We have got a lot of fish catching to watch as we go on through the morning here. Mike Iaconelli on top as it stands right now. Lee Livesey, second place. Jamie Hartman showing up on our top 10. Good to see that. Drew Benton, we've seen, we've seen much of his exploits already today. Alex Redwine in his second year. Brandon Lester. Polinick, Hudnall, Robertson, and Shryock rounding out our top 10 today. You got to be in the top 50 at the end of it all today to make it into the. Yeah! Order! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Day two action continues live from this unique place, one of the oldest man-made lakes in this country. When it was built, it was the largest in the world among man-made lakes on the Saluda River, Lake Murray. And our six anglers who will be with in the boat all day long, that's the way they are distributed. In that area that Mark Zona described to you, on the, that side of the lake, all the way down to the dam, up to the farthest up there, Matt Robertson, the man who started today with the lead on the strength of 25 and a half pounds yesterday. Man, it's fun to hang with Robertson all day living with that topwater bait. Got him. He ain't big. Little. That other one was huge. That messed it. Barely a keeper, baby, but whatever. They'll get bigger. That one that missed is five pounder. Just gonna stick with it. How sick this, this rocket look on this rod, though? What do you think, Jake? Looks pretty sick. It's not about a seven pounder on the end of it. There's huge ones here. That was a, oh, that one. I keep that one. And still looking for an early limit as well, getting a lot of headway in that direction. like I got a hook in him good. That made me nervous. Must have been spawning over on one of them stumps. Not a big one, but we'll take it for now. We are definitely getting there. Fish there. 
kind of just having to fish around this morning because really two of my best spots have had boats sitting on them. So I'm just kind of making it up as I go, to be honest. But I mean, we're on a good enough lake that you can do that. With four fish, 13 pounds, Brock Mosley is our new leader. Got the unofficial bass trap. This thing, he's thick, just wasn't long. Couldn't tell how long, how big he was. Well, there are way too long on that little thing. <laughs> a lot of long. fish that size up shallow. Locked on, garden fry, and been way that too kind long of bass on this looking at the weigh-in yesterday <laughs> will get you in big trouble on this lake right now. Almost two and a half. 240. Two-pounder gives Benton the lead. Five three-pounders yesterday would have landed you in 70th place. That's how strong yes. it is out here. What's the cut going to be Tommy, if you double 17-5? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Tommy, that was that was one of those weigh-ins yesterday where you thought maybe you caught 17 or 18 pounds going to be in really good shape mm -hmm. creeping around that to, you know, 20th mark. That was. Oh. That's one of those ones where you get off the stage and have the look. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Corey Johnson was one who mentioned that big time yesterday. He was like, thought he had a decent John, day. A big one. Oh. That, looks that is a big one. I think it is. I don't know. Top water bites, I think they're all big. He feels big. I hate landing fish on this side of the boat. I think he's a little bigger. He looked good. Now he ain't. You believe that? Like, how would you have not thought that was a three or four pounder? Boy, that fish looked a lot bigger when it blew I mean, up on that cape. <laughs> mm, whatever. It's more than we had yesterday right now. I ain't complaining. Like, no joke, would you have thought that was a little one? No, smoked it. Whatever. <laughs> They'll get big. We're gonna catch some Kongs today. I don't doubt it. No doubt, he is a superhero. Yep, no question. No. Two big ones in his live well yesterday, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think we got a special little treat from our cameraman, Wes Miller. Oh. Got us some footage yesterday, wow. getting a good, good look at the bottom here on Lake Murray, those hard spots. You heard I can I can Ellie say it. And the other thing here is mixed with grass. We saw Tyler Rivette concentrating on a little bit of that deeper grass that we didn't think would be much of a player in this tournament but obviously a very, very fertile environment looking at what everything has been weighed in with Mercer yesterday, Lake Murray in great shape. Good, good shots here from Wes Miller. And man, the bass are fairly curious <laughs> to this <laughs> underwater GoPro and still a lot of fish spawning, a lot of fry garden happening, but that hard bottom right there is such a key for your leaders here on day two. You didn't watch yesterday. You, Davey Height, pointed out many, many times. I mean, lakes go up and down. Their fortunes rise and fall. And we are in, in a peak time for Lake Murray right now. Very cool. Kind of kind of paints the whole story of what's happening in this tournament, getting to look at them underwater. And we don't get that on many lakes, Tommy. No, Good stuff no. from Wes Miller. That was a treat. Thank you, Wes. Wes went above and beyond for sure. I say there's a lot of building foundations 
submerged down there that were city little villages that got uh, impounded yeah. from from 80 90 years ago yeah and they started building the lake it's a good dive and there's a bridge underwater there they also got to ask west this if he found any ordnance they used to or or a b25 bomber what they used to train and target the islands in Lake Murray, World War II. Bomb Island. Oh, is that a place there? I believe it is. Bomb Island, I like that. There's listed a number of uh, islands there. They actually did a History Channel show lifting up a B-25 bomber, and it is in Birmingham now at the museum. Kind of interesting watching Hunter Shryock so far today, catching that big one off the start and said he was going to force that herring bite all day today, which really has not been the case. We already seen him sight fishing and did not push that herring thing for about more than 15 to 20 minutes off the start. Hunter with 22 and a half we'll yesterday. Cast in. We're going to run over there and then we're going to run up a little bit. Got about a dozen top tens in his career. This goes back to 2018. He's in Tennessee now. So many fish out here, but I don't want to catch him on a drop shot. Not what I came to catch. Just like Drew Benton, Hunter Shryock saying, boy, a lot of the a lot of the fish that are locked on right now, just not the basically the caliber that'll get you in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. I want them to get back up on the point. They're out here a little bit. They need to get up there in that shallow water. Tommy Z, these herring lakes really seem like tidal places at times in similarities. Obviously, the fisheries are different, but it's do you ignore the tide and just fish a spot all day as it comes and goes? Do you fish a group of points without really concern if the herring are there or not and just waiting on the fish to show up? Whereas then you have Patrick Walters who would be like someone running the tide. He's like, we're gonna run here, and then there, and then there. He already has his next three spots planned out. Like Mike Iaconelli said, some of these guys fishing 50 spots in a day. It's all kind of in a timing deal or if this doesn't work, I'll have to go this, this, this. You know, I, I think watching Shane LeHue yesterday kind of really painted the differences. You see guys like, you know, Patrick Walters that is, is literally going to fish 40 to 60 spots. But then you looked at Shane LeHue, who, Ronnie, for the most part, he fished two yeah. spots really the whole day. So I think it's kind of personal style more than anything. Or and, and Brian like knew. Shane LeHue just... A, a guy like Shane LeHue that says, I know that there's a hundred sitting there. I just need to wait it out. And Brian New took a photo of his graph yesterday and he ran 128 miles for 14 pounds just running around wow. Lake Murray. Man, that's a long time. Which for a 50,000 acre, yeah. Like that's, that is... you either have to have it timed perfectly or you're wasting a lot of time in your driver's seat. Lester is head on a swivel. All these guys pretty much in that same posture. So there's a lot to see here, obviously, pointed out by Matt Robertson yesterday, and we've seen him get the topwater thing going. Not getting the size he wants, but certainly getting some bites out there. No doubt about it, and he is a, a big bait player. You don't really see Matt Robertson on a lake like this go down to the spinning rod that we got to see. Yesterday, it was kind of all about finesse, not for Matt Robertson. Every single bass he put on the way, way in stage yesterday coming on a Berkeley Kane Walker should be a fun day with Matt Robertson. Big ones not quite showing up yet, though. 
Mets had a little bit of a slow start to his season. Has not made the cut at uh, either Okeechobee or Seminole. Had a good classic. Can believe that. For sure. Drew Benton yeah. started us out today. Drew. Really looking at his day so far. A little bit of fry guarding That's going on for Drew Benton. A couple fish still locked on. And Drew said he's going to have to make this one up as he goes along. Really not on a herring bite. And said he's going to have to some way, shape, or form find five that will lock on by the end of day number two. Said a majority of the fish done spawning. So solid morning, though, for Drew Benton. He's making it up as he goes along. Drew Benton, good start. A bit, of, a bit of momentum for him. He's 22nd at Seminole, a fourth place in the Classic. So, uh, yeah, he's got something to build on right there. Drew Benton now hanging in there in fifth place. Good day yesterday, of course, for Drew with 23 pounds. Brock Mosley, though, from Mississippi, the man on top with 33 pounds and 10 ounces total. Mike Canelli in second place, Lee Livesey. In third place, we'll be right back. Master live from Lake Murray. There it is right there. What a beautiful place here. Very mature lake and first time the elites have been here since way back in 2011. But this is a different place this time around. It is a lake at its best and we are reaping the benefits of that. Seeing some great fish catches all day long. Brock Mosley oh. has moved, maneuvered his way to the top of the leaderboard. Good on him for a good job today. Mike Iaconelli with a five fish limit, a three pound average. That is great. Early going today, he will have to improve on that. He knows that. Everybody knows that. Three pounds is uh, is a great fish, but uh, you got to exceed that Not if you're right going to be a player. If you're going to play out here today, let's go out to Hunter Shryock, who started us out today with a great one. Five pounder, basically just right out of the box. That leaf off of it. Hang on, boys. Sorry, bud. Okay, we got an issue. I got a knife in my leg. All right. What's that, Ricky Bobby? Not a giant. It's just, uh, we missed two. Check this out. Berkeley Chapo, 105. I got it stuck in my glove. Fusion 19 hooks are sticky. We just got to get them to eat it. And that one ate it, so. Three pounder. Let's go. That was cool. I just wanted to be doing it when they started doing it. There's two we missed. Chapo. I appreciate you though. <laughs> We're gonna see the quick just because we've been casting with it a bunch. We're gonna see the whole rotation of topwater baits this week, which is a good problem to have going into the weekend. Absolutely. Oh. Another good early limit. Just under 15 pounds for Lee Livesey. Longview, hey, Texas. Tommy. Yeah. Could, could I pull the curtain back something with Lee Livesey? Just because it's kind of still. Please do. Uh, fairly traumatizing. Went and taped a show on Lake Fork with Lee two weeks ago. And in for the fourth time, in the history of the Zona show, we did not get a show on Lake Fork. Wow. <laughs> I'm not kidding. On a full moon. Oh on a full moon. That is unthinkable. Uh, that's extraordinary. I'm, I'm sorry that happened. I would... it, it was, it, it, we all kind of just looked at each other and what, what just, as you would say, Tommy, what just happened? <laughs> well, I guess, you know, I'm sure Not you'll... everything a given, but. No, nothing's ever. Guaranteed, that's for sure. And you'll get your revenge on Boy, Lake Fork. One thing I can tell you about Lee Livesey is he does understand bait 
Spawn, whether it's Chad Spawn, he, he is very, very, and he will grind it till there's nothing left. When he gets locked in on this style fishing, especially this time of year, got to see a little bit of that in the open last week. Ben Milliken concentrating on the Gizzard Chad Spawn, huge victory, and hats off to him. Mm hmm. And Lee cut definitely cut his teeth, not on herring, but how fish react to bait spawn. I remember the last time we were at Toledo Bend with the elites that Shad spawn was. The driver of the day for the first couple oh, hours yes. every day. Walter's hooked up. <laughs> Jason Bate. I could tell the whole school just it went crazy. Come in the back. God, look at him in here with him. Look at him in here with him. Insane. Mm. That took a minute. Let's leave that bag in the floor. I land all of them in the. I forgot about you. Do I now? There was like 20 of them at least. Dude, I saw them go crazy. That's what I was telling you. I was like, they were all just sitting there docile and all of a sudden every single one of them left. still another one of them had a big head but just not very long <clears throat> but it's number four <clears throat> a fish we saw Livesey catch give him 169 on the day in the lead this Almost fish ought to put Ben pounds. right back on top. Wow. I'm calling 214. And that should be enough to get us into tomorrow. But we ain't after that. Worked yesterday by Drew, 23 pounds, second place. All right. Yeah, it's three pounder. Some of these I'm parked. I ain't been back to since second day of practice, so I can't remember. I'm just gonna catch every one of them. <laughs> well, Drew Ben, yep, yeah, yeah, putting all that hay in the barn on day one is always a valuable, valuable thing when you're trying to win your second tournament. And Drew Benton, with our Bass Pro Shops top lure, is gonna explain to us how he got it done yesterday. Hey guys, Drew Benton here. This is how I caught him on day one, sight fishing on Lake Murray. This is a big bite, fighting frog, uh, watermelon red, green pumpkin laminate, 5 16 elite tungsten weight, four out owner wide gap hook, 20 pound cigar and Vizex. And uh, you know, I'm trying not to stop on them unless they're the right ones. Mm hmm. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. yeah, Drew 
Cook have definitely made some hay with that rig, that entire so, setup right there. This morning I didn't really have anything big to start on, so I, I ran the point thing for a little while, and uh, that didn't really pay off, so I've just started coming to some bed and fish that I had parked, you know, from about the second day of practice, and I'm just checking on them. And I've been able to catch four, caught one on top water. Um, but I'm really just waiting for the sun to get up. It's still not quite right yet. And uh, I'm seeing plenty of fish up. It's just gonna be a matter of running across the, the better ones. I've got a few down the lake that are better quality, but I just don't wanna run down there yet and, until I fish up here first. I found a pretty nice one right here that I, it's in a shadow there, so it's hard. I'm not really gonna be able to sight fish for it, and that's what's frustrating. You just kinda gotta back off and, and blind cast to them, but what I've learned is they usually bite better that way anyway. They bite quicker. Three or four of them there or around. So, I mean, we kind of just buying our time waiting for this sun to get up and for whatever reason, they start biting top water better with the sun up. But I think that's kind of common for these herring fisheries. So I'm just trying, trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. We just seen some big ones, but I think everybody's seen big ones, but seeing them's not catching them. <laughs> it just kind of gives you hope. Gives you hope on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, we got a long day still, a lot of stuff to try, and uh, I think we got two of the right bites, as long as that, that one we just caught is our smallest. You know, we're, we're on track to doing what we need to do to at least stay in contention. You know, shooting, shooting for that 21, 22 pounds again, I feel like you're gonna have to have to stay inside the top 10. That's where we're at. Robertson started the day with the lead, if you're just picking up with us today, 25 and a half pounds. There's only three fish so far mm. today, nothing of any size. And the one thing we saw with that topwater gig yesterday, you had better be on their head immediately. When they come up, mm. they start blasting the surface. Shane LeHue said, if you are one or two seconds behind them, you are not gonna get bit. That's one of the things Matt Robertson said. He literally really just sat with this. his rod in his hand waiting for them to come up yesterday afternoon. I think we're going to see a lot more of that today. Getting on into the morning here. Day number two, you got to be in the top 50 after today if you want to fish on the weekend. So critical to make that cut on this day. Third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, this marathon elite. And Drew Benton, it's been a lot of time uh, with him this morning for good reason. He's the man on top right now, Lee Livesey, another early limit on his part. Ditto for Mosley and Iconelli. Scott Canterbury suddenly appears in our top 10. That's a big development out there. Robertson, Shane LeHue back in the top 10. Brandon Lester, Blaylock, and Shryock rounding out our top 10. Plenty more to come. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Into the second half of our morning, day number two here. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray here in South Carolina. 
Big, big tournament going on here in terms of fish catching. We have seen a ton of it through yesterday and well into today. Lots of good limits already in the boats. That is good news for everyone who likes to see him catching the best in the business at work out there. 103 of them. You got to be in the top 50, though. There we go, right here. Lots of life happening around oh, the yeah. lake here. In the Doing here. work. Oh, yeah. Getting it done. I told you, Tommy, you get a blue back herring in your mouth, there is never yeah. going either. You cannot turn back. That oily oh, oh, oh man, you just binging, Whoa. binging on the oil. Yes, sir. Herring for Ooh. breakfast. That's that. Oh my gosh. Wow. wow. There's not going to be any left if he keeps going. Let's get you back out on the waters. Uh, on the water for Patrick Walters. Patrick Walters, who's won four times with the Bass Masters at all different kind of levels, including here as a collegiate angler, national championship. Yeah, and Patrick Walters making the comment he felt up in the creeks where there's some herring still spawning. A lot of fish in the creeks, but the bigger ones very close to the main lake. May not be as big a numbers, but the quality very close to the main lake on these shallow points and humps. Ooh, smokes. Yes. Woo. Slow and steady. Ooh. That's a good one. Well, you get a look at how shallow he is with they his were power poles right there. Out there. Oh my goodness. That was like a freaking country mile. Good fish right there, and one of the things. Walters made the comment, knowing those sweet spots on these points and humps where these fish will kind of just sit and wait for the herring. And he said the key to knowing those sweet spots, Tommy, the biggest benefit of being a local here and knowing those spots mm. is it just cuts down on the lack of time looking for them. Knowing where they sit uh, and, and time management or lack thereof so huge knowing those really key areas to where you're not searching you, the you know exactly where they are i was just right testing there. the bait to see if it looked good and they came up they might look at this they'll look at it oh god no dude that was crazy <laughs> come back here this is like four pound line i don't want to pop it <laughs> Old Johnny Reb, old convict bass. Dude, it like went poop. That was insane how quick he bit that. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. There's, look at the fish underneath them swimming around. See him? It's like five. Don't pop the line. Down, down. I hate these things. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't be so calm if I had a, didn't have only but one of these. Oh, he freaking gobbled it too. We lucked out yesterday. We only had one striper on camera uh, among our six yeah. anglers, yeah. so that, that was good. Maybe that, <laughs> that maybe we'll have the same Major fear. To, yeah, that's yeah, a major fear. That's uh, where it is that uh, 
they, they're the first ones to bite, so if you can get past them. Davy Hyde, our own Davy Hyde, standing there. We just watched Patrick Walters put that good one, that five-pounder in the boat, Davy. And I know you South Carolina guys keep tabs on each other. Tell us how much time Patrick Walters spends on, would have spent on this lake, say, over the past 12 months. Well, Patrick has spent a lot of time here. A lot of his high school and college events were, were here on Lake Murray. You know, he's known because Santee Cooper is his, his home lakes. He's known down there uh, to be able to catch him. But he has caught him many, many times here on Lake Murray. And I saw him uh, last year about this time of year just up here fun fishing. It's a great place to fish, as you can see. Lots of fish being caught this week. Uh, been with Lee Livesey for about the last 30 minutes. He's caught, he said, 25 or 30 keepers so far this morning. And that was just a little bit before 9 o'clock when he told me that. He's got almost 17 pounds, so a good move for Lee Livesey today. Davey, we've talked about a lot of your leaders, and especially Patrick Walters kind of dialed in, and we were talking about this earlier. These points and these humps, the sweet spots, whether it's a hard spot on the bottom, maybe a small vein of rock, and Patrick Walters, as elusive as he is with all of us in the in the media side of Bassmaster Live, finally broke down last night, and he said, hey, knowing those key sweet spots is so critical when you're running as many spots as we are not wasting time because they continuously go back to them kind of break down for a viewer that's not been on this lake or Clark's Hill what how small those sweet spots are on these points well Z uh, I was a little surprised I heard you talking about your discussion with Patrick I was a little surprised he was in that in depth that much with you to be honest with you because um, patrick can be a little elusive and he he did kind of dial in uh i'm not so sh sure that he wanted everybody to hear that so so um but anyway to your point all of these uh shoals these points these humps they're they're big flat areas that, that have you know long tapering uh variations of depth so you have to narrow down where those fish are and, and once you really learn about the blueback herring fishing this time of the year it's, it's really amazing how they're not using the whole point like it seems there will be some small fish here there and the stripers will, will come and go but the largemouth bass set up in very specific spots on each one of these places that, that they're catching them and and when you're able to learn that then you pull up instead of fishing a hundred yards of a, of a point you fish 10 feet and those fish either bite or they don't, the, the bigger fish. And, and the guys that have been doing it a long time, like Patrick Walters, they, they figure that out. And that's one thing, you know, we talk about a home field advantage, but that's certainly a home field type advantage here on Lake Murray. Davey, I made the comment after the day one, way, before the day one weigh in, and I thought Tommy and Ronnie were gonna smack me for saying this, but I said, I think we might have a bigger weight here this week than on Santee Cooper. What say you, Davey Height? Well, uh, very, very possible. You know, Santee Cooper is is a great fishery, but but we're going to be there later this year, and and most of those fish will definitely be postponed. There's still a lot of fish here uh, on Lake Murray spawning, as you've seen Drew Benton and quite a few other people catching those. But being just one week later at Santee Cooper Lakes is going to be a very different tournament than it was when we were there last year, and, and just the numbers of fish that you're able to catch here and keep upgrading. I mean, you, you saw guys like Ali Livesey already this morning. He's caught 30 fish, and he can upgrade just a little at a time. Santee Cooper in the post-spawn, not many people are going to be catching 15, 20, possibly even 30 fish to be able to upgrade. Uh, quality fish, but you might see more people there at Santee Cooper not, you know, with three or four fish or, or just catching five and not being able to cull their way up. So, yeah, I, I think you're spot on. We could potentially see Lake Murray, uh, the winner, being a heavier weight especially let's say 50th place i think will definitely be heavier here this week than it will be next week at santee cooper baby more elusive to get information out of right now on the bassmaster elite series patrick walters or koya fujita pick one <laughs> so so uh I, i'm going with koya i'll be honest with you z we talked a little bit last night but but i saw koya this morning and I, Ashley and I stopped for three seconds. <laughs> we knew we weren't getting anything there, but hey, we're gonna get to know Koya a lot better this year, and, and I'm sure things will get better. Davey, hi, thank you so we much. Are. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, oh, we're well, not. We'll see. We'll see. Davey, hi. Thank you so much, Davey, out there with so much. It's such the encyclopedic knowledge 
of Lake Murray and the history here and, and what's going on right now. That's the important part for sure. Drew Benton on top and Patrick Walters, Lee Livesey, the Brock Mosley's and Michael Iaconelli, the guys that you two have been talking about catching these big numbers of fish because they know where to go. They know where to go and they're hitting their timing just right. It's fun to watch these, uh, these best in the business guys operate on a lake that is at its peak. Good, good second day action at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray, and we will be returning momentarily. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Lots of fishing to go on day number two here at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. Lots of fishing we have seen already today, that is for sure. This is day two action. You gotta be in the top 50 at the end of today. That is your imperative. Gotta make a move today that gets you up there so you can fish the weekend. That's standings unofficially as per Bass Track as they stand right now. Drew Benton, a former champion on the Bassmaster Elite Series, right there on top. Patrick Walters there, Lee Livesey. Brock Mosley, Michael Iaconelli, Scott Canterbury up in there, yes. Lake Hugh. Shane with you when we spent a lot of time yesterday in there as well. But our VMC on point, well, let's just take a look at what we've seen from these guys. Mark Zona. Yeah, and really looking at your VMC on point, where we were right on day one and where we were drastically wrong. All of us kind of predicted that it would take, Ronnie, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you were the highest. You thought it would take 20 pounds to get a camera on day number two. I believe that number ended up being, to get a camera for day number two, 22, 22 pounds. Mm. And if you had a really solid day with 17 pounds and five ounces, well, you are on the cut line. Your VMC on point by far and away, Lake Murray in a big way, Tommy Sanders. And I will say, Z, in our defense as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon, I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. And when you said yesterday, what would have a better weight, Murray or Santee, I interpreted that as winning weight. I still think Santee Cooper may edge it out, but overall weight, Lake Murray is exactly who we thought she would be this week. Tommy Sanders and I talked about how the winning weight maybe in 2011, maybe what guys are shooting for to make the cut. And looking at those numbers, 2011 to 2023, Obviously, a lot has changed. The lake has gotten really good over the last, you know, some of these lakes go in cycles, but also it was a little later wow. in May, so the post spawn was harder into effect. But leading weights in 2011, Jamie Freilich had 17 pounds, 9 ounces. This year it's 25.8, but if we had Jamie Freilich 17 pounds, 9 ounces, you would be just above 50th this year after day one, whereas 10-10 was 50th last time. So the difference is, I mean, the top end weights, Lake Murray has exploded. We've seen big fish, obviously. We may never see a bunch of nine pounders getting weighed in, but a 6-14, we should see some more heavy sixes, maybe sevens this week. That's what the expectation is. 25 and a half, right on par with what people thought would be a leading bag or a bag that should get you near the top five. That did that for Matt Robertson. Like you said, Z22 even just to get a camera. 16 uh, anglers had 20 pounds and I, if you're in three pound average territory Tommy like you said if you had 15 pounds you were down in the 70s, 70s. so not a place to be but it does feel like a Lake Champlain or a Lake St. Clair yeah. south this week at how Lake Murray's fishing and it's during the post spawn guys it's not even during the biggest time where these fish get you know a month ago or even in the pre-spawn in February let's take it out to Koya Fujita our Rookie of the Year points leader. We'll get into those ROI stats a little bit later on today. Oh. Oh. Why? Ronnie, I think you did get a little information on how Koya was catching them with Sago. Yeah, it, it's a little 
vague or generic saying he was swimming a jig head. Now, we saw him uh, pitch to docks and kind of swim out a finesse jig head at, at Seminole, very shallow, but six to 15, six to 18 feet deep off of some of these places. Obviously, forward facing center is gonna be a huge deal for Koya with that technique, but whether it's a, a straight tail worm or you know a swim bait style, just putting it around fish or around the bait and swimming it through it was key for him. He said on stage yesterday that this, the only thing he told Dave Mercer, this reminds me of Japan. Some of the lakes I fish in Japan, the, the water clarity, uh, some of the, the different things he can fish, um, and also I guess where it's related in the country that this, it's not too far south like right, Florida. It's it's, totally it's, yeah, it right, kind of yeah. feels like Japan, which, you know, I wouldn't mind going to Japan and fishing whatever lake, it mimics Lake Murray for sure. Everybody else has got 20 it, it, pounds it, at this point. I have no idea. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That herring deal. Kind of sure interesting. Decent. Keep me on my toes. Do what? Keep oh, just about the time you're ready to fall asleep. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, we missed Interesting how, how deep he's catching them, Ronnie. Yeah, I don't know how big or small that jig head is. Hopefully each day that we have him on camera, we learn a little bit more. And by Sunday, we have a whole piece to the puzzle. We only got to see him one day at Seminole and didn't get to talk to him too much that night. So yes. hopefully putting the pieces to the puzzle. But yeah, I mean, when Taku Ito says that this guy is for real, because not only his yes. age of coming over and having success in America and how much success he had at a young age in Japan, but when Taku believes that in a few years or, or currently Kyoya could beat him out any day of the week, that's, that says something because Taku has been a stalwart the, his first few years on the elites. Great work. Ronnie, I know the Bassmaster yeah. Live fans definitely want you to get us more information from Koya because Sego was adamant he is not going to speak to me. And I said, get in line, Jack. <laughs> Do a great job in the Northern Opens last year to gain entry to the elites this year. And everybody said, like you said, he, they build yes. him as, as for real, and yeah. he proved it at, at uh, the second event. And it wasn't it Central. wasn't a Northern Open like Lake Erie, St. Lawrence River, right. Oneida. Yeah. It was the James River, more, more Chesapeake Bay, and, yeah. and, and Oneida Lake. Like it's it was not just what you'd expect. So kudos to him for making it and then translating to the elite series. If he ends up, he's in our Rookie of the Year lead right now, if he ends up holding that through this, we would have had a different uh, leader in Rookie of the Year the first three events. Will Davis, I believe, was the wow. Rookie of the Year wow. in the first, uh, the first event, Joey Sefuentes. And then when you think that, hey, we have a rookie who's a champion already, he's gonna hold it for a while, we could have the guy yeah. who finished second place and end up doing just as good at Lake Murray. And we could see a couple other rookies that made the Elite Series for this year show up at Santee that we maybe haven't got to highlight. Actually, I apologize, I'm sorry. Logan Latuso was the Rookie of the Year leader after the first event. Sure. He, yeah, made, yeah. he made Okeechobee's top 10. Yeah. Ronnie, what rookies at Santee are you looking at? Looking at? That's what made me just catch myself was I, thinking about Logan Latuso. I think that sets up okay. very well for him. I even think a, a guy we haven't heard of this year, just standings wise, Kyle Norsetter from Wisconsin. I think that that could be a good one for him as well. Um, but, I, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm. if, if there's a forward-facing sonar brush pile bite, Kyoyu could be just as it, good there, too. Something interesting, Tommy, and some of our friends that we'll talk about a lot next week and really want to ask Davey about this. Not to, boy, we got, finally got a little low in the action. Santee Cooper this time around. A lot of our friends that fish that lake a lot kind of texting back and forth said, and we got to see Carl doing this the last time we were there. Eelgrass is going to be a major, major player next week to where the fish are using a lot more of the eelgrass than they are the cypress trees like we've seen in years past. Well, that just opens up Santee even more. There's only so many cypress trees you can fish and boats can get around. So having eelgrass. Albeit a lot of huge, them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, yeah. well That's interesting. there is a lot more, lot more eelgrass <laughs> there this time around than there was the last time. And, and I think this, it's taken a few years, but this is the month that we were supposed to be at Santee Cooper in 2020 when it got postponed to the fall. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. So now we, three times in four years, we'll finally get a, a good picture of all the different seasons and the different attributes this place can produce.
Well, the one person to definitely keep your eye on throughout this tournament, obviously now he said it is a four day process, just staying consistent on Lake Murray. Had a big day one and already off to the races with Patrick Walters. A little bit of power early this morning and a little bit of finesse. Said this fish had about a dozen swimming with it. Power pole replay of the day. Patrick Walter said, man, I am waiting for Saturday. When that wind shows up, he said he really feels like Lake Murray is going to show out like it hasn't already. Power pole replay of the day. Mm. Patrick Walters, solid one about 20 minutes ago. He's doing some really high quality waiting. I'll tell you for sure. He's only ounces behind our leader, Drew Benton, as it stands right now. We just saw him land that giant that we saw in the replay. That's Z, just Pretty for strong, strong player here for for Z, for Tommy, for the fans at home, since none of our anglers have missed the cut and are watching this from Kyle Austin uh, made a couple top tens in the opens. Mm -hmm. He's one of our EQ anglers this year. He lives at Santee and guides out there for multiple species. He said it could be and he also said will be one on five to six foot stumps or schooling fish possibly. And then he says, wow. who knows, though, there still have been a lot of fish that haven't shown up to spawn yet. So, be interesting. Wow. Ronnie, I'd like to get some information. Does he think that there is potential of another sight fishing tournament if he feels that a lot of the fish haven't moved up yet? That'd be interesting to know. Yeah. No doubt. That was the, that was the buck. <laughs> See if we can catch the female. It has definitely been a unique spring right after Lake Seminole when we went to Ufala for the open. Water temps were in the mid 70s and there was like 27 bass on bed like they had just made that push, but the water was so warm. Then we all get these cold fronts. The Carolinas experienced them as well. So you have a, a wave of fish push up early, early as soon as it warmed to do it and then come back off with the cold fronts and then another wave come up when you actually expect them to. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was a late wave as well. So how the weather's been. Well, we got a little bit of a lull going on right now. Some of our anglers just fishing their way through it. Others are uh, making a little move right now. Among those is uh, Brandon Lester. What a great season last year. Good, good start to his tournament yesterday. What's on his mind right now? Well, let's listen in. I'm just running some new water right now, just kind of trying to run into something new. Uh, obviously, a lot of the stuff that I've been fishing is getting hammered, and I think probably one of the keys this week is going to be finding an area where you can run around and have it a little bit to yourself, where people are not just doing circles and fishing one after the other. Plus, it's not real bright and sunny yet, so I don't want to go to some of the fish that I know are there, so I'm just kind of running some new stuff, trying to run into something. Mm -hmm. With a limit in the boat today, no giants have arrived as yet. No, and just kind of seems like one of those junking around tournaments, really watching what Brandon Lester's doing. Little bit similar to what we're seeing with Drew Benton. Three herring fish cool. yesterday for Brandon Lester, two off of the beds, and saying he's got to get away from a little bit of the pressure from comp competitors. And not only that, we did get to hear from a lot of our leaders. There are a lot of local boats fishing this time of year on Lake Murray, obviously fishing as good as it is you're going to have a pile of boats on that that lake don't know what i'm saying tommy have no idea <laughs> well now trying no. to put it together is hard I, at times I, well I tell yeah, me I do you know you're, you're looking at the poster for right. that uh, run on sentences not making sense it could good be morning a, for brandon it, lester it's it's could all be part a total of a rich different pageant weekend. that is each and every one of these bassmaster elite series that's, events that's right Ronnie, you talk about how how strange the weather's been throughout the you know the everywhere really this is no joke and i was telling our fellow co-worker mike mckinnis this there were in michigan last week taped a bunch of shows there were fish starting to spawn 
on Saturday, and we got three inches of snow and a high of 31 on Sunday. It knocked them back a little bit, Tom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> locked them on even more because they. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. locked them on. <laughs> they felt it was more stable then, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Brandon had an uncharacteristically slow kind of start to his season, Elite Series wise. Did have a good classic, but. Uh, he made the cut at Okeechobee, but I mean, yeah. missed his first cut in the 70s. I think in like two years, like he hadn't missed a cut yeah. that that bad since 2021. That was the year. I, that was the week I picked him on during the lake as yeah. Drew Benton's hooked up. Yeah, he got 16. 16 pounds for Durbin. He said he's going to have to find them wow. as nice. he goes. So I'm assuming that was another sight fish. But the, yeah, he's hoping that more continue as, to as pull up. They say up. where I grew up, that's right smart a limit there. That's 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 a pretty good going on today. Is it is it going to be his time this Man. time around? Is he going to notch his second Bassmaster Elite Series win? Way too early to tell about that, but. Uh, Watching Drew, and as you said, Mark Zona, he's kind of flying by the seat of his pants a little bit here, making it up as he goes along and doing so quite successfully. Absolutely. Kind of, he was the one angler that we talked to that has a camera where it, he seemed a little bit worried. He can take a load off with 16 pounds already in the live well for Drew Benton. It seems like, though, it's a positive. As many sight fish that he can catch and add to his weight only helps prolong that needing a, a a great herring bite for him. He, he only needs a here and there, possibly. So, you're been at least salvaging two days of tournaments yeah, off of that. For sure. Patrick Walters, we know that he's around him. He knows exactly where to go, and he is uh, taking full advantage of that. Lee Livesey catching tons of fish. Brock Mosley and Mike Iaconelli, big numbers guy as well. Be interesting to find out what the rest of these anglers that inhabit our top 10 right now are doing. We'll try to do that when we come back. Yeah! Hustler! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Hope you're having a great Friday. We do so appreciate you being with us here on Bassmaster Live and all our appreciation to all the fans, and there are millions of them who made the, the 2023 Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, such a great success. Again, setting all the records, rewriting the record books for attendance. They're in Knoxville, Tennessee, a reach through television and all the other platforms of 4.5 million people. Another record, not wow. by a little, but by a lot. Just a, just a great, great, great event. And hats off to Jeff Gustafson, first winner ever from Canada. And Z, we're going to a place that I know you and I like to go and watch that fishing on Grand Lake and, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, a great town for a classic. Absolutely, looking at the box center right there. A lot of classics we have covered there on Grand Lake. Awesome fishing and off, actually kind of listening to Ronnie talking about the Opens EQ. Already got a, I believe we got a qualifier for the classic. Got Ben Milliken. Yeah. Going to be there, correct, Ronnie, next year? Yep, and Justin Barnes, the first two winners of the yes. Open. Jeff Gustafson, he's in. Yeah, they'll be at Bugs Island next week. We'll punch another ticket for the Open. Wow. That's what's happening where That'll we are. Be an right? interesting tournament. That, will be, that fun. will be. Grand Lake is fun. We'll have to make all the GoPro footage black and white from that event, just because that's the last time we were at, at Bugs Island. It was it was in the <laughs> wow. 80s and 90s, you know, it was nostalgia. It was on radio, I, make I, it think, look, yeah. I think the coverage was on radio. I'll have to make it look like it used to. But, yeah. Let's get out to Matt Robertson, our day one leader with 25 and a half pounds. Thanks, Lee. 
It ain't that big. Huh? But I'm close. I got what I had yesterday now. He's fucking little. Oh boy. Yeah. Sorry, Jake. Buddy, that's, uh, I, I just ain't got nothing, you know? I won't be here long, Lee. I need to be setting on my holes. Fritz is setting on my best one. Setting right on top where they blow up, but I mean, it's whatever. Lee Lewis, he's talking been a about morning. Go ahead. Yeah, been a morning for Matt Robertson yet again, taking a look at David Fritz right there over Matt Robertson's shoulder a little bit ago. Wheels getting a little shaky for your leader here on day two, yeah. Tommy. Well, just gonna wait him out. Which is Pretty so bridge. weird Ronnie. because he, at this point, he had like two little ones yesterday and all the other issues. Yes. So, I, you know, he's got, but understandably so, you want it to happen quick. Peace of mind of that. Lee Livesey saying he already has what he had yesterday, which was 17 and change. So that should be enough to make the cut. But Matt Robertson wants to stay in the top 10, most definitely. Like you said, he just sat more close to him, is all I think. Huh? I kind of did in a polite way. Oh boy. Here we go. Well, if I was his age and some young punk rolled up to me and told me to buy asked me to back up, I'd tell him to You know. <laughs> what man? What? What would you yeah, tell him, man? If he had long hair, I'd be like, listen here, you little punk. <laughs> you ain't telling me what to do. Great call by Jake Latonders there to uh, to say, hey, you're live right in the middle yeah. of the yeah. whole. That, that's a, yeah. hey, you're live. That's helpful way. info. That's just plain old helpful. Punk info. is fine. Yeah. That's the kind of info usually, that's legal to give. <laughs> actually, Tommy, you, you can't stress this enough. Usually, you know, if there's a camera on a boat, you are you're live if you're the leader. Yeah, yeah, you kind of assume that. Yeah. Right. If it's I'm not. It's not this is not rocket I science. <laughs> there's nothing I hate worse. I trust you, dog. Well, yeah, whatever. Much as like, I'd like What's to stick around on? for the rest of that what? conversation. What? We do need yeah. to, to cover the rest yeah. of the tournament here for a minute. <laughs> Again, the rich well. pageant that is the Bassmaster Elite Series. <laughs> hey, it's all part of it. Mm. <laughs> big bass, big yeah, stage, we're, big pressure. Exactly, exactly. We're we're getting information. There was a lot more colorful things being said that we can't <laughs> yeah. quite be I, I can't imagine. Nope. Just a long one. Nothing to him. I thought it was a bigger one than that. Unless that was a female that I saw up there. I could have swore I saw a four pounder. Always good to go from Matt Robertson's boat to Drew Benton's to get some sort of composure. Wheels yeah. back on the bus. Uh, yeah. Kind of want to go back to little Matty Robertson yeah, right now. A little bit. There's a part of me I'd like to get back there too. Brandon <laughs> Cobb has, has been off bass track, but his fish, five fish just oh. popped in. He's in second place. Oh my. About 15 pounds today. Look out now. Number three. Tommy, there are guys who do well in certain months of the year, no matter where we're at. Brock Mosley seems to do really well in the month of April, early yep. May, things like that. But when you get Brandon Cobb in his yes. home state yes. in this month, it is hard. It's hard pressed that he's not going to be in the top 15 somewhere sometime. Yeah, so two two days in a row, he's halfway. Now he's not done today, but he's halfway to his goal of being in contention, yes, probably. He's a monster. I'm telling you, I saw a bigger one up there. We went over it. I don't, 
think I'd have made that big of a mistake. Stop your heart right there. Taking a look at our four box right here. Ronnie back on that opens EQ points and pretty big hammers in the top five, but you got to give a big hats off. And, and I know you follow the opens a lot. 18 year old yes. Trey McKinney. Hmm from Illinois. The big one went back to that stump. Two big performances, isn't it? Hats off. 18 years old. 18 years old. He's won his his division in the BFLs, the Angler of the Year, the last two seasons in Illinois. He's the cousin wow. to Trevor McKinney, Trevor, who's made the classic in the end. Yeah. Classic. Uh, through the, the bracket. bracket. Wow. Yeah. And uh, the other thing about that Z is Ben Milliken stole the show with a win at Toledo. He did. At, but the he deal did. is, is Everyone else in the top 10, they basically made the top 10 at Ufala too. There were seven anglers wow. that made the top 20 at both the first two events. So imagine winning an open and getting a top five in another one and being tied for the points lead. That's what Milliken and Brett Cannon wow. are. All these are EQs, yes. guys? Yeah. And, okay. and John Garrett has two fourth place finishes. He's yeah. two points behind those guys. There are so many anglers right there in the top 10 within right. 20 points after two events. That is a huge leg up. Yeah. Pull off something like that. You'll start to have a little, some gaps if they keep it up. You know, there'll be some gaps in, from 7 to, to 12 and then from 12 to 30, you know, but getting in that top nine will be a dogfight for sure throughout the rest of the year, especially where we go. Bugs Island, Wheeler are the next two. We'll head to Ufala, Oklahoma. And we'll have Watts Bar and, or we'll have the St. Lawrence River, Watts Bar, mm -hmm. Lake of the Ozarks, and Harris Chain are the last wow. seven events. Three of them on that one stop right in front of me. I'm talking about. That's impressive. That is impressive. No All way. around those performances so far in the first two opens. But yep. man, 18 years old. Tommy, I was focused on a Motley Crue right. warrant right. concert of where <laughs> <laughs> the bad seats <laughs> back in, <laughs> in 1990. Spot, but they're shallow stumps and they're just up here sitting around. I know they can probably see the fish. Probably be a little windy, but uh, these fish are just sitting up here swimming around. I mean, there's not much schooling activity right this second, so I'm just trying to pick off some fish that are doing something a little bit different right this second before we go back and catch schoolers. You know, schooling bites been better in the afternoon anyway. So uh, we're just nickel and diamond, one here, one there. Ooh, they just busted on the backside. We're gonna go catch schoolers again. That's why they're just all over this, the, the saddle, everything on this spot. Great shot from above there. Backing up everything he's telling us about. It's Absolutely. Really, really informative. Crazy, crazy, crazy how shallow they get. How does something get so tangled so quickly? I do not understand. I know they can see them. I mean, there's so many fish on this spot. It's insane. They can see them. They're everywhere. And I can see how they're not on my bait. <laughs> Couple of big fish coming across the so board. John here. Cox, a four and a quarter. Cobb with a four pounder. Matty Wong with a 412. Corey Johnson, four and a half. Coming into this event, Z, I called Brandon Cobb and Patrick Walters to talk to them about it. And ironically, you know, they didn't have a preference whether it was full on spawn, full on herring spawn, pre spawn. They didn't really care. The biggest thing that they said was that there was a national tournament with live coverage before this within the month off limits that took, you know, we haven't been here in 12 years, Tommy. Yeah. So most of the field hadn't ever seen. Lake Murray this time of the gave year. Gave it away. To have, yes, it, it ex not exposed yeah. some things, but 
it clues in when you have a hundred of the best anglers in the world sure. and they're watching and in you know indulging really content <laughs> you know <laughs> you know that they're going to be shortcutted to oh, i already kind of know what to expect yeah, well enough an absolute and some of those things that might absolute. be intricacies are already kind of oh, wow. mm, vague I, I, I think it gave away the entire story. Most of all, Ronnie, I think it also gave away where, you know, where it was at. I, the, the, the obvious thing was the herring the deal, which really kind of laid the plate what to look for. But it also, I think one of the biggest things gave away what phase of the actual largemouth spawn was in as well. And, and and looking at that tournament, if you watched it and and looked at the template of the herring spawn and the large mouse spawn, it is amazing that you would go up river in this event. It re it really is. Yeah. Because that has been a truly a non-factor a few weeks ago and this week. Look at that bass. I mean, a stinking giant. <sighs> Boy, Ronnie, we were talking about EQ points, and I looked down the list. Ish Monroe's 32nd, and Bobby Lane is in the 40s, 46th. See, and that's one thing that- So many tournaments left. Well, I'll say this, is that a lot of anglers have texted me asking the statistics of it. What do I need to average to make the elites with the EQ? And I said, well, we've had 50 anglers and 75 anglers the last few years. When there's a 225 boat field, the next EQ angler in the list could be six or seven spots behind you. And there, it develops these weird points gaps. Last year, Ninth place making the elite series, or you know, the, the third highest angler non qualified, there was 35 points to the next person. So there's weird gaps. So the average may change up totally this year with having 175 people right. all in the same yeah. game. Yeah. And so I'd, I'd expect that, that average to maybe get a little harder. Um, but honestly, it really is dependent on these guys. When you have seven yeah. make the top 20 back-to-back -back events, of course that, that top nine is going to get elevated some. Yeah, that's, that's a hard one to answer. Hey, right and kudos at this point. also to Kenta Kamura. Doesn't have to, but is fishing. Uh, I think he's fishing all nine. He fished yeah, the first two divisions. Year, right? yeah. he's, he's all good on the Elite Series, but he's fishing the Opens as well, and he's in the top 10 in points, yeah. so he's fishing well. Meanwhile, over here on the Bassmaster Elite Series, where those guys are trying to get to, Kent is already here, pointed out. We are looking always at our points, our points awarded for consistency throughout our season, our nine tournament regular season, as reflected in the progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race. Dan and Polnick are defending that title from 22 against these anglers right here in top of the list. Ooh. Top performer, Tyler Rivette, still holding that lead. Brandon Cobb, though, we talked about what an absolute beast he is here in South Carolina. He is not surprisingly found in second place. Shane LeHue, great day yesterday, good tournament here, helping his cause. Carl Jockamson, Kyle Welcher, Pat Schlopper, Drew Cook. Drew Cook will be defending his uh, championship uh, last year on Santee Cooper. Hudnall, Wenland, and Greg Hackney make up our top 10 and Angler of the Year points. Be right back. No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. What a great tournament so far. Capital City and Lake Murray Country are fantastic hosts, organizations here on a lake that is just absolutely on fire. 
so many fish in this area, so many pictures we have seen in advance of this tournament and the tournaments before. It's just, uh, wow, we, this is where it's popping in the world of bass fishing, Mark Zona. I mean, you know I'm not very big into politics and work, but boy, I made that comment yesterday. Pre be a pretty good lake for a Bassmaster Classic. Well, it got a little bit of traction yesterday. I... Got a few texts after our way. And, really? Uh, several people think the same thing. Uh, definitely, you know, you heard Greg Hackney say on stage, they're not even actually biting right now. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty good sign. This is one of the best lakes in the southeast. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's great to hear. I'm, I'm uh, rightfully so getting some traction with that comment. That makes all kind of sense. Why in the world would you want to do that? Jake Whitaker just filled his limit. He's got a 4.9 and a 4.3, 16 pounds on the day, second place. I spent a lot of time in the top 10 yesterday. The man from North Carolina, we're out to Hunter Shryock. Mm, give me some of that. You like that, don't you, Ronnie? I do. That and a chatterbait all day long. I'd be happy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was ugly, but gosh. He ate it. That's a specimen right there. What do you think, two and a half? Thank you, buddy. Give me some confidence. Even that one. I know, I just seen the one on bed, dang, four feet deep. And it's cruising off and it's a four or five pounder. I think that's what I'm catching. Yeah, I look at. Some of them are on bed and I, maybe that's why they're missed, they missed it. I don't know. I'd like to have five by noon and I'd just keep this chopper in my hand all day. Yeah, see that looks like a bed. It's so hard to tell though in this clean water. I got one place, I call it Narnia. Bass Narnia. They just swim around blissfully. They don't bite nothing. Facts. It's just like an aquarium. I'm like, well, that's cool. I see, I see enough fish to potentially win the tournament. But they just swim around. I think a lot, I mean, you said the same thing. Like there's just so many fish and so many people see the same thing. Jake Whitaker just Anissa. cold again. He's at 18 pounds, 13 ounces today. He's got the lead with 38-13. Yep, taking a look at that bite right there. Really good camera work. And he's kind of seems like Hunter Shryock's on a, that is a great shot. He's on a lot more of a, a typical shad spawny deal. Little shade lines mm -hmm. really doesn't look like he's on the herring gig that we're seeing closer to the main lake. Oh, that is old, old gnarly corn right there. Yeah, he's, he's kind of got a few bends and <laughs> bruises through the years. I would expect some of that. I know the herring spawn happens in a lot of places, but for the guys like Drew Benton and Hunter Shryock, who may be farther in a pocket looking for a sight fish or on some of these straighter banks that are on the main lake, where they might run into a shad spawn a lot quicker than they run into a herring spawn, just because it's so infrequent for the... If a shad spawn's happening on a bank, you're gonna know in that first hour, like they're gonna show themselves. The herring spawn, it's so infrequent sometimes. Brandon Lester's had a limit for a little while here, just hasn't got the bigger fish today. His biggest fish is like two and a half, two and three quarters.
What's our biggest so far today, Suge? There's Jonathan Kelly is our Phoenix Boats Big Bass leader with a five pound, five ounce he entered mm -hmm. okay. on Bass Track. That one is at least a legit 14 inch. He ain't much, but that other one is. Four others with really five O's. Close. Mike Iconelli just caught a five pound. He's up to third. Wow. 17 and a half pounds on the day. And I'll say, you know, I'm proud of, proud of Ike. Yesterday's bass track was around 18 pounds, and that's what he weighed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes he's the other yes. spectrum, you know. I was worried when I saw the cut line was starting to get around 17 that there's no way he's going to be below that after being talked up all day. But he was, he was within that cut. Been hooked up again? No, not much. Not much on that one. And I guess it could have been a little female up there with that thing, and I didn't see that, that one. Really, really haven't seen where the I'm herring. Throwing it. I haven't seen the herring deal pop off very good today. Mm. It's this was about the time yesterday, shot, though. Still, that I thought I'd be out of it by now. Really started a fire from about 11 o'clock on, and that's what your leader, Matt Robertson, said. He said the afternoon was absolutely insane. It's good to hear. Tommy, surprised by Koya Fujita today? A I am little, a little bit, bit, yeah. I kind of was expecting him you know? to be right in the thick of it. Very, very slow. You can go ahead and change that battery. I'm gonna look. Well, for those who are watching Bash Track for their favorite angler or for their fantasy team, it could be worrisome at Lake Murray, but we know that it could be a first hour of the morning flurry or last hour of the day flurry. We know that it's kind of inconsistent at times, but the possibilities are always there. As we're bringing it in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, I'm at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge for a little bit of Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and Mercury Drain the Lake. I told you guys yesterday I would be transparent about Drain the Lake today. I wanted to see how it fared at the weigh-in, and then I was either going to go back on my statement or actually show my team. And because it went well, I'm showing off the team this week. Drew Benton, Patrick Walters, Brandon Cobb, Stetson Blaylock, those were the first four I chose to use here at Lake Murray, knowing I couldn't use them anywhere else. And people were wondering why Benton not at Okeechobee, not at Seminole, obviously had a great classic. I just thought there would be a sight fishing bite and it's come to fruition there for him. Patrick Walters, Brandon Cobb, no question about it why I saved them for Lake Murray just with their knowledge of blueback herring and being from this region, knowing how this place sets up, that's a lot of good intel for them. Stetson Blaylock, we were talking about it, guys who fish well certain months of the year, April is a great month for Stetson Blaylock and in the state of South Carolina, where in 2019 he had a first and a second in our back-to-backs there. I'd expect him to do well at Santee next uh, next week as well. And then I picked a couple sight fishermen other than Drew Benton, Jacob Poroznik, John Cox. Those both showed up yesterday afternoon late for me with some good bass track fish. They're all in the top 30. All those guys I mentioned in the top 25, top 30 of this event right now, only two guys that are below the cut line that I need a little bit of an uptick today, and that would be Bradley Hallman, who said there was fish all over his spots, blowing up everywhere. Only caught four, though, yesterday. And then Hank Cherry, he's caught 15 pounds with his eyes closed before plenty of times and came just shy of that yesterday. But then looking at our Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, buckets A through E. Kyle Welcher doing pretty solid right there in the top 25. For me, Patrick Walters, I rode with him again here. He's obviously near the top of our leaderboard. Jacob Rosnick in the top 25 as well. Just had two guys that are from the Carolinas. I expected to either get on a shad spot spawn, a sight fishing, or the herring spawn. It did not translate well for KJ Queen and David Williams, but we know how day two turnarounds. If there's 20 pound bags galore and 17 pounds galore, maybe some of those guys below the cut line will have an uptick today. But hey, they're going to have to do a little bit more if they want to be in contention and get in there safely. Ronnie, you being well, boy, hold on now. Mm -hmm. I think this is friendly. Oh. Oh, yeah. 
Huh? I don't even know if that's keeper, Lee. You want me to measure it with my... Thanks, Lee. You need to stay on this one all day here, Tommy. Am I fair by <laughs> saying that? I'm, I'm not time. surprised to hear you say it. I kind of whip you on that. You're not going to tell him? Got a camera, bud. You ain't kidding about that Carolina rig. Buddy, I'm going to my holes here in a minute. I'm serious. I got magnums on a couple of them. That's a little better one. Well, a little better for me. You're fine, buddy. Huh? I need my, where's my net? Where's my net? Oh my God, whip them for me, lady. I'm serious, dog. I got I fucking owe you. Hi, I've had you back before, though. You know what? Nope. Huh? <laughs> You'll get it back? I don't give it to you once, buddy. Now I gotta weigh all these little tiny suckers. I gotta weigh a bunch of two pounders. I'm about to go throw top water the rest of the day. Seriously, I caught all them on, on cane walker yesterday. Every, every one I weighed in. Tommy, there's a lot of happy Gilmore in this whole <laughs> situation. Yeah, a little bit of that. Batteries of that in mind. Yep. Gosh. You got a couple extra coal bulbers, Lee? I only got three, and one of them's got the end broke off of it. Actually, I don't even know what I did with them. Well, there's two and a broken one. I think we did have That's three okay. weeks off after the Classic to make sure, huh? you know, we had like... Cool. I don't, I'm saying I don't even have uh, uh yeah that's a good idea go catch the magnums here in a second granted the ones he was catching in Knoxville for the class I'm the most pole, unprepared fisherman on, on the planet pretty sure this is a little one about what they but we're going to. Huh, that better be the small one. Huh? Huh? I did give it to you once. Son, I had you back like nobody else in Texas. Huh? Tell me I'm lying. Huh? We're out of coal bulbers already. How did I get through this week? Or how do I ever get through? It's like a couple of this neighbors one? visiting at the garden gate, comparing notes and so I, forth. Yeah. <laughs> and Tommy, compare? I think you know it. I've stressed this throughout the years. I am big and awkward, and that is exactly what we are being served in a big way yeah, here absolutely. today. Day number two. Big one. You heard Matt Robertson say, Not area where he one. caught a lot of big ones yesterday, getting bites today on his cane walker, but losing a little Didn't bit of nothing. size. Got him. But again, if you really look at what he did yesterday on day one to lead this tournament, everything he weighed in came Barely from keeper, this baby. time oh, whatever. to the weigh-in. So 
Matt Robertson, to fun day today on the Topwater Bay. More fun having with David Fritz and Lee Livesey. <laughs> Now you. You believe that? He's fucking little. Well, sure, but uh, you've got a couple of magnums though that are we're just waiting, waiting to be caught out there. So <laughs> look, look forward so, to that. He is. We'll be in he the is eventually going to go to those magnums, Tommy. He there is. No He's, doubt about it. He, the only thing missing today is. <laughs> Bob Barker out on a green. That's about all we missed. That's exactly Meanwhile, right. Jake Whitaker called to 19 pounds, five ounces. Oh my gosh, Jake Whitaker. What's going on with him, Ronnie? I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to find out. Well, I'm, I'm anxious to I'm see. Not shocked. I'm not shocked with him showing up well in the Carolinas. Already probably to 40 pounds unofficially with the margin of error right there. Jake Whitaker putting on a show for sure. Drew Benton. What a morning he has had. What a two days it's been for him. Ike and Nelly, ditto for him. Brandon Cobb, Brock Mosley, and there's Lee Livesey, Matt Robertson, right there just one spot apart, separated by Patrick Walters, Scott Canterbury, and Shane LeHue. Lots of changes all morning long. Yeah, so I didn't start on the Heron deal. I, I don't really have many great places to do that. It's just about, you know, getting in a groove and hunting them down each day. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Um, you know, I'm throwing a moving bait while I'm looking and I'm getting one or two key bonus bites doing that. But for the most part, I'm having to go on a, a grown man Easter egg hunt and find, you know, the big ones uh, each day. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Getting ever closer to the midway part of our day, day number two of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray, our full field of 103 anglers out there fishing this third stop of the year, wrapping up the third, the first one third of the season as it is for the Elite Series this year. Goes by very, very quickly. These tournaments go by quickly, and for Hunter Shryock, who started the day fantastic form with a five-pounder, it's been a little slow since then. There are certain baits that just make you feel like you're more apt to catch a five-pounder, and he's throwing one of them. work. Well, he was definitely a little bit secretive with that Chapo. Been interesting that he's been the only one we've had on camera throwing that. But again, definitely fishing shallow a lot differently than the usual herring fish. Still not the size we want. A lot want, of our leaders are chasing. We got to have something. Got to have a limit. What do you think that is? Three? Two and three quarter? Three? Now let's see if a certain someone will go start doing the same thing. All right, things shaping up a little bit for Hunter right there. Hanging in there in the top ten. That's important. Want to get yourself in position to really go to work on that final day, Championship Sunday. That's the goal, the ultimate goal for all our anglers. Back to Patrick Walters, good tournament, third place. He's not big, but he'll keep. Take him for a start. Definitely gonna be first to go, though. 
based on what we saw yesterday, we had our hopes up high for today, and uh, I think that it was delivered for us today. Yes. We've seen some great fish catches what? today, Mark Zona. Yeah, and really a lot of diversity nope. today, looking at guys nope. like Patrick Walters really concentrating solely on that herring spawn, and guys like Drew Benton, Jason Frygarters, actual spawners, and really kind of looks like Hunter Shryock, who is hanging in there, not getting a ton of bites, keying a little more on that shad spawn deal, and really looking at all of our anglers we've had on camera. If you were to go off of what every one of these leaders said after day one, better look out in the afternoon. I got a feeling the Dave and Davey show is gonna done pop off today, Tommy Oh, Sanders. I, I, I'm in full agreement right there. Gave us some great stuff yesterday. Our coverage is gonna continue here uh, after we take a quick break here in a couple of minutes uh, on Live Mix. That's for an hour, and then the next hour, of course, as you mentioned, Dave, Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer, Davey Height will take over for an hour. Definitely wanna tune in for that and write it down. Coming up later today to kick off your weekend, maybe. 3 p.m. Eastern time, that's when the first flight checks in and that's when the weigh-in coverage begins right here on Bassmaster.com. A lot to look forward to, another great day at Lake Murray. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalot. No. See how good of a cast I can make. Not good. Where are we going? Let's idle across the way. It's going over here. It's just not a big school. I guess I am there. We're a little deeper to die. A little deeper. a bunch of them. A little more than I thought. I know they're big.
could be, but there. There's one on the rocks. Oh my gosh, here comes a pack. Big pack. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, there's so many of them. It's insane. I missed him. Oh my God, it pulled out his mouth. I'm trying to pick one out because usually you can catch one. I can't believe how many are right here. None of them look bigger than the other. That's the problem. black tail. They're going to start schooling in a second. I'm going to catch that one that's sitting up there real quick. Dude's not even moving. Oh my God, there's a big one. That's a big one right there. I wonder why he freaked out like he did. Oh, it's a striper, that's why. Ooh, we do not want him. All right, let's reposition the boat. This is insane. They're just not biting yet. Holy smokes. We can get them to school on one fish. I mean, like all the baits in here. I want to kind of get in front of that bait and push it back. He went and looked at it. This is crazy how many fish are up here. That just shows you, dude, when, I mean, they're just sitting there chilling. They don't care about you. Ooh, I'm gonna retie that real quick before something really boogers up. That's a lot of fish. See a bunch. Did you see them? I can see some of them swimming by, yeah, every once in a while. Well, 
None of them were like five pounds. Well, one of them was probably four to five, but we need like a true six. Oh, it's a bass swimming with a gar. They're all the way down here too. This is, there's a big one right there. They're just, they're everywhere. Oh, he's going for it. He's going for it. Oh, he swerved off. That's a giant right there. Ran away from it. This is mind boggling how many fish are up here swimming around. But by the time you see them, it's too late. They don't even fish for that fish, basically. If you, if they've seen you. This dump right here, I wanna check. Turn that baby down. One of them will be active. Okay.
어, 그라피. 예. Now we got a two prong approach. I like it. Golly, bud. He's mowing the dang hill. Sounds like my yard. We need two five pounders. Be right where we need to be.
It's like if I don't get it when they're there on the head, they swim out after it. But that, if I make the most perfect cast to where they're sitting by chance, I get them to bite. That's not very often though. No, I'm serious. You know, they got 20 feet across there. I've seen it too many times, just like what we did over there, and they, they swim out after it, and then it's, it's done. You, have one, you get one throw. At least with the worm, it, it could sit there. Bass Narnia, dude. I'm, I ain't kidding. There's enough bass to win the tournament. That's if you catch every single one, but talking with other people, other people have all seen the same thing. It, it literally is like in a fish tank and they're big and they're white bellied. I mean, they look like footballs and they don't, they don't care to bite. I don't know what to do to catch them. I've fished there twice now. Super, super weird. I had one bite yesterday and it was like a four and a half pounder and it pulled off. It didn't even get the bait. I hooked it for about three seconds. Jerry is getting after it. That, that's me at my house. Neighbors think I'm crazy. You gotta keep the rocks mowed down. Heck yeah. I've turned into one of those guys. Freaking planting grass seed. Nothing works. Nothing grows. Complete waste of time. But I like doing it. Come on, fish. We are playing with a spawner and he's about to drive me crazy. He'll chase anything that gets anywhere near that bed, but the problem is he won't sit still. I had him nip one time. I can just get him to sit still for just a second. I can catch him. He's just wild. And there he goes.
got him. A great big one, but it's pretty big to us right now. Get out of there. Go. He's probably two and a quarter. Get rid of a little runt. Yeah, he was a wild one. All right, let's run on back in here a little ways. Bite it. He's looking at it. One on the other post. Oh, I got it off. Oh, it popped. Okay. Yes, we got it. All right, let's do it.
scar hole. Let's roll. We'll get, we're gonna go about a mile back.
I was hoping some of these males would get females, but it ain't looking like it. I'm telling you, man, I'm afraid this spawning thing is going away. I may just have to go run those herring places the rest of the day, which is fine. I don't mind doing that, but I know, I mean, if, if this is going on, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to do that tomorrow. I wish I could get one more day out of the sight fishing deal.
Let's go try another pocket. Yeah, it's five. I caught an eight here on a glide bait in practice, Larry. Here? Yeah. It was right out there about 50 yards. Was that yesterday? No, in practice. Um, the first day whenever it's windy. Actually, it's probably sitting about where your boat was whenever I found them the first day of practice. Or maybe it's it a windy day. Carolina rig, height this stuff. Buddy, tomorrow big bags are gonna be caught in the wind. I'm telling you, like magnum bags. Like I think I could catch 30 in the wind. I don't know if I was a fish or grass or what. Felt like a fish, like. Oh my God, there's a three pounder right here, a four pounder. Oh, eat it. Oh my God, eat it, come on. I just had about a five pounder swim by my boat, Larry. 
No, I don't know. He just come lurking by. Oh, I'm Have you? Really? I used up there by at Rock Jetty in practice, and there was a bunch there, too. Did you? They're, they're all under me, Larry. Like big ones. I gotta try something. Gotta try it. Like, it's the only way I know you can catch them right by the boat. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, come on baby. Oh my God. Oh my God, come on, oh God, missed it. Oh, he eat it, he hit, he hit the back. I cannot believe that. Oh God, he's on it again. Oh my God, there's, oh my God, oh my God, come on. Oh my God. Oh my God, come on. There's a 30 pound bag by my boat. That one tried to inhale it and hit the back. All my baits messed up. They're all over it though, look at that. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Larry, 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 baby. The one with the messed up thing. We needed that one, baby. We're back on track. We're back on track, son. We gonna do this for a minute? And then I'm gonna be hard headed again. I'm gonna pick up the top water again. A spectacular sunny Friday afternoon, I guess just officially afternoon here in Columbia, South Carolina. And I walked up here and I said, you know, you know when you watch the masters, you know you hear the birds chirping, you just 
It feels out today exactly how you imagine it would feel at the Masters. Well, it should be because this is the Bassmaster Elite Series. But look at the top our leaderboard, the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. Jake Whitaker, a former Elite Series Rookie of the Year, has never hoisted one of those blue trophies. But we've seen some. I mean, we've had two Elite Series champions already, and both of them first-time winners. So why not keep that streak going, Jake Whitaker? But look at that leaderboard right behind him. So tight. Looks like a northern tournament. I'm joined by Davey Height, Bassmaster Classic champion, Bass Fishing Hall of Famer. And Davey Height, this place is so special to you. You spent a good portion of your life living right here. And, man, it is showing out in a big, big way this week. In a big way, indeed. I, I, I'm not just well, – sometimes words – don't matter. Visions matter. This is your Toyota Midday Report, and if you didn't believe it was standing in a big way, we'll show it to you, right, Davey Hyde? Yeah, absolutely, Dave. Sorry about that. I guess I should have you know, mentioned that, yes, this place is near and dear to my heart. I spend uh, a lot of my life living on the shores of Lake Murray, and it's, it's such a joy to watch what's going on uh, in this event, the Bassmaster Elite Series. Stop number three, and been looking forward to number three and number four, I must admit. Two tournaments, both in South Carolina, but this one's certainly near and dear to my heart. A lot of the reason I like what's going on is just what you see here. Brandon Lester, one of the anglers, doing a mixture of things. He's, he's wacky rigging. He's fishing the herring bite a little bit, just kind of doing what he loves to do. And we're seeing that with the top ten. You just talked about the leaderboard. Um, you see a lot of diversity. And, man, I love watching tournaments where you see a lot of different things going on. One of the age-old patterns of the Elite Series around bass is the baby pattern. Hunter Shryock just announced this past week that him and his beautiful wife are expecting, and it looks like the baby pattern is holding true. <laughs> it really, really is. And Hunter's having a great tournament, a good day yesterday, obviously. That's why we've got a camera with him. But he's also having a good day today doing something a little different just like i mentioned our top anglers are, are really mixing it up hunter catch a lot of his fish on a top water parallel in these shady banks speaking of something different now for something completely different matt robertson your <laughs> tournament leader he certainly is completely different he uh let's say plays to the tune of his his drum beat and his drum beat only a lot of fans for matt robertson and Man, he is performing for him. Just on my way in here, came by water a few minutes ago. I saw some wearing an ugly stick jersey. You know, I'm sure they're coming to wash the way in this afternoon. Matt Robertson with 25 pounds yesterday, caught all of them on a cane walker, a top water lure, which under the conditions, if you're not familiar with these blueback heron lakes, they would see, man, how did he catch all those fish on top water? Slick, calm conditions, bright blue skies, weighed in 25 pounds. Today, though, a little different for him. He's had to mix it up, caught most of the fish on the Carolina rig. You got to watch out for this dude right here, a four-time Bassmaster winner, Somerville, South Carolina's Patrick Walters. Well, Patrick's got a lot of experience here. It's no surprise to see him doing well. And he's one of those guys, uh, we've said it before, he's not going away. I would be willing to, to guarantee, unless he has some kind of just unforeseen trouble, maybe, you know, some issue that with mechanically or gets his time mixed up or somehow is... His graphs get on central time or something. I hate to keep make, making stuff up, but he'll be here on Sunday to win this tournament. The person who holds the trophy over their head, if it's not Patrick, they're going to have to beat Patrick Walters. He has been knocking at the door. It seems like event after event for two seasons straight. Drew Benton. Yeah, Drew Benton. This this tournament set up well for him, but to be honest with you, I'm a, I'm a little surprised that he's been able to catch as many fish sight fishing the second day in a row that he's been able to do that. Yesterday, I think three of his fish were sight fishing fish. He's catching a few, you know, on the heron bite on these shallower points and, and humps that we have in Lake Murray. But what he loves to do most is sight fishing. He's one of the best in the business at it. And yesterday and today's condition has been really perfect for him. We'll have to see what happens with Drew Benton's approach tomorrow when they're expecting a lot more clouds and a lot more wind. But I, Drew Benton can catch them a lot of different ways. He just likes to sight fish a lot. Very, very good at sight fishing, but he definitely can adjust. But picture perfect conditions for sight fishing. And as you said, Davey Height. The paradise may not continue. <laughs> a lot of people talking about some incoming weather, but, but I checked. I don't think it's 
going to be that bad. No, it's actually, it's it still paradise. Uh, you're, you're exactly right. We're in paradise. It's Lake Murray country. It's Lake Murray country, Dave. Um, you know, obviously, because I grew up here, I love it. But honestly, who could not love the conditions we've had, the fishing that we've had and seen so far? And it's not going to slow down. Even with a little wind, a lot of these f- fishermen that are, are not sight fishing are praying for a little bit of wind. So, man, could it get better? Maybe so. You've had an incredible history right here. I mean, like I said, I mean, this, this area, you lived a lot of your life here, but an incredible Bassmaster history here. Actually, never been out of the top 10 in Bassmaster competition on this very body of water. Does that, that kind of look, looking at this old footage, does that kind of make you, I mean, are, are we, don't call it a comeback. Is Davey Height making a comeback? <laughs> uh, you, you teased me with that a little bit, Dave. I don't know if I'm, uh, you're looking for another co-host or, or partner to do a little commentary with, but man, I will have to admit coming here to Lake Murray and seeing all the fish catching and seeing, uh, friends and family follow me around is, is really, really incredible. That's a few years ago. The wind was blowing that day and they were still biting. So I don't think a little wind's going to bother anything here, but you know, this great footage, it brings back a lot of memories and, you know, I think I'm finished second in this event, just a little short. But look at the people showing up. I th- think we'll have that here this weekend. Lots of people uh, love the sport of bass fishing here in this part of the country. They sure do, and a great crowd will be showing out here this weekend. And I, I don't want to get ready. i got to be I gotta be honest. I mean, I love working with you, Davey Hyde. I just, <laughs> I just like how it makes you really uncomfortable. When it Lee, does. <laughs> Lee Livesey started this, but he's one we're going to have to watch this week. Man, he is having an incredible tournament himself yeah dave i was able to go out there on the water this morning ashley and i and and, and spend some time and one of the people that we watched was lee livesey and it was incredible how many fish he said he had already caught and still how many fish were schooling around his boat and he's saying man i need i need to leave i got to go somewhere else and i'm like yeah um there's only like 30 schooling around your boat i'd go look for a better place too obviously being sarcastic but lee livesey having a lot better morning this morning he had 17 pounds yesterday but was one place out of the cut 51st place 17 pounds absolutely incredible not real surprising though for lake murray yes 17 pounds five ounces the official cut as of this morning we'll find out what that rally's up to do you think it'll double this time around davy i do i I do i mean it's it's a great great fishery and and, you know we tried to downplay it a little bit yesterday with talking about all the pressure and the amount of tournaments that this lake gets but it just keeps on producing no doubt about it we can talk about it but why not look at one of south carolina's finest young pros patrick walters and he'll just prove it to us davy height absolutely it's all patrick reeled his bait in really fast he was fishing a little closer to that riprap but obviously some fish were schooling out there and he makes a cast and hooks up immediately well you look at his resume and it's it's just shocking how how short of a career he's had with what he's accomplished already. Yeah, Patrick is, like you said, if you look at his resume, he's been successful at every level, including this top level, the Bassmaster Elite Series. So great young fisherman with a bright, bright future and a lot of it still ahead of him. With every call, he makes all those fantasy fishing folks that much happier, or the ones that picked him, which was a lot of them. Yes, absolutely. Be hard not to. Patrick lives about two hours from here, you know, Santee Cooper Lakes. He fishes more than Lake Murray, but he fishes here quite a bit. I see him uh, out on there the lake is. quite often, just fun fishing, going Eve. fishing with friends. few ounces count that's why they take so much time trying to be sure they call the right fish this term is going to be uh, so tight the, making the top 10 but t- the goal today is make the top 50 and it'll be just a few ounces that separate someone from fishing on saturday and someone <laughs> headed to the next stop we now see the prince of japanese fishing koyu fujita he looks like a young prince look at that picture there I mean, you could see him sitting on a pillow. (laughs) 
I had a little fun last night and this morning talking with our friend and Mark Zona, and, you know, he calls the anglers and really tries to kind of pick their brain so we can talk about exactly what they're doing. And uh, uh, he wasn't giving out much information at all. So we just have to watch and see. We'll get our information. We'll put a camera in his boat. Here's some information that me and you talked about off camera that we know about Koya that is in pretty incredible. People talk about forward facing sonar. That's something he's very good at. He literally has five different transducers on his boat. He has yeah. three up front and two on the back. So uh, we did talk about it. It's interesting. I did see him out on the, oh, this is not right. Not the right species. It's a striped bass. So, I did see him out this morning when Ashley and I were out watching the angler fish, and it was very obvious that he was 100% focused on his electronics. But if you have five transducers going at one time, how can you not spend most of your time looking at them? It'd be a little confusing for me to look at five different pictures while I'm fishing on the front of the boat. Surround sound finally makes its way to professional bass fishing. Yes. That's a striped bass that would be about the same size of a largemouth. It'd be interesting. I would like to, to ask if they can tell the difference between a striped bass and a largemouth bass of the same size. You know, obviously, if it's 43 pounds, it's yeah. not a largemouth. But, uh, you know, a two-pounder, three-pounder. I'm not at that skill level yet if some some of the guys can do it. Not so sure that they can, but be a good question to ask. Not Koya, though. No, <laughs> He's not no. going to answer it. No, absolutely. <laughs> Matt Robertson, Patrick Walters, Hunter Shryock, and Koya Vegeta, a four box right now. And um, Robertson had feels a tough good morning, to get one big one in the boat. Putt. I didn't really start catching them yesterday till now, and. Uh, you know, you know, I was kind of banking on a couple schooling spots today, and I kind of sat there a while, and I don't have patience. But, man, I sat there for a long time, and they never come up schooling. And I feel good about it. I'm looking at, I've, I've watched, you know, a 20, 25-pound bag swim around the boat right here. Larry caught a three and a four. I caught a five. I mean, I caught an eight pounder here on a big glide bait in practice, so I know what's here. Um, I just, I think they're, for some reason today, I know that, listen, I know this, like, they are going off somewhere in schooling, but I just hadn't run across that, you know, what I need to run across yet, but we will. We're gonna fish here just a little bit longer. We're gonna run some of that other stuff, maybe some new stuff, and, uh, yeah, man, it, once you get around them, it don't take long. That's what happened yesterday. I didn't catch, I caught them between 12.30 and 2, or 12.30 and 2.30 yesterday. So, yeah, you know, I got, honestly, yesterday I had three fish for six pounds right now. So, not too much worried about it. Digging in a little bit to what he said. Very few of these places are not being fished by multiple anglers. So timing is very, very important. What happened to him yesterday well, that like seemed like, that like you know, why me though. having these I can't believe, troubles? I don't know how I missed him. He like rolled its and rolled it over like losing the fishing that. time obviously changed his rotation. Yeah. And for him to lose that time and then not be thinking, man, I already fished there four times today, and I saw five other guys fish there. I'm sure he was frustrated because of lost time, but he, he had a fresh basically had a fresh perspective and went, and that could have been a big, big key to his success yesterday. It's so tough mentally to stay in the game 
when the conditions seem like they shouldn't be biting, man, if I miss the early bite, it's, it's over for me. But it's not that way here on this lake with these you know, with the blueback herring. It's just not that way. You can catch 20 pounds, 25 pounds from, from 12 to 2. Maybe it will be from 7 to 9, or it could be 1 to 3. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen. Watching Matt Robertson this week, it's like watching a NASCAR race, and the leader has two blowing out tires, and everybody says <laughs> it's not going to work, but he just is fine. To know, you know, yesterday, very little fish in time. Today, everything goes wrong, gets a bone throw in his way, and now... Right back in the mix? Yes. I sort of feel like maybe every day is like that for Matt Robertson, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he's not accustomed to this. He doesn't look like this is something that's never happened before. You know what I'm saying? Leading a tournament with, you know, with, with issues. <laughs> I, I, that's I, a compliment I, I, now. You're, you're probably not wrong, Davey. I'm going to be honest. You're not, not wrong at all. That was meant to be a compliment. I don't know if it came out quite that way. <laughs> what you're saying is he's a mess, but a beautiful mess. I tried to say it in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> and you did, too. You said a beautiful mess. <laughs> One of my favorite beautiful messes. Uh, but look atop the leaderboard. Matt Robertson, not your leader anymore. Unofficially, Jake Whitaker with 40 pounds, 12 ounces. He's a former Elite Series Rookie of the Year. Being chased down by some hammers, though. You look, Patrick Walters, Drew Benton, Carl Jacobson back in the mix in sixth place. And look at Mike Iaconelli also in the top ten for Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Lots of fishing coming up. Yeah. No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to sunny South Carolina, beautiful Columbia, South Carolina. The spot, the stop of the third stop of 2023, <laughs> and the second day of competition here on this beautiful fabled fishery that it's been about 12 years since we've visited Lake Murray. But man, this body of water continues to change. But one thing that doesn't is all the big fish alerts. Skeeter boats, <laughs> big fish alert indeed. And Bernie Schultz, the last boat to leave the dock this morning, but that hasn't hurt him. A 5-6 Davy height. That's a good one. Good solid fish here for Lake Murray. This time of the year, a 5-6 is one that you need. A lot of three-pounders. be honest with you, there are a lot of four-pounders in Lake Murray. So a five-plus pounder will definitely go a long, long way. Good job for Bernie Schultz. A long, long way. And you see our playing field, a maze of points and back bays and turns and Speaking of confusion, let's join Matt Robertson. Matt Robertson using a big glide bait here. Had a few big fish follow it. Looks like he's got one following it now by the way he's trying to lower his profile and so that That's fish can't cool. see him. Doing a figure eight. This would be incredible if he catches a muskie in Lake Murray. Happy loves the long ball. That's my experience oftentimes with a big glide bait. A lot of lookers. A lot of lookers. Your TH Marine weather forecast today, as you can see, a high of 85 degrees, and it was only down to 63 degrees this morning. Beautiful and sunny. South winds 5 to 10. Tomorrow, going to get a little bit cooler, but still uh, pretty much paradise. 78 degrees with a low of 47 and the wind a little bit stronger. Southwest 10 to 15. Davey, um, looking at Larry Nixon right now, and I love seeing Larry Nixon on the Bassmaster Elite Series, especially when he's catching bass. Is that going to be enough wind to change things at all? Yes, I think it should uh, help a lot of these anglers that are having trouble getting these fish to bite. Some of them have cracked the code, so to speak, and have able, been able to catch. You know, Lee Livesey this morning had caught 30 bass before 9 o'clock. Wow. And you see some of the ang other anglers say, man, I cannot get these fish to bite unless the wind blows. So I think uh, more people will be able to, if, as incredible as the weigh-ins were yesterday and as incredible as the fish catching is today, more people uh, tomorrow, uh, percentage-wise, we'll only have 50 on the water, but percentage-wise, I think more people will 
catch, you know, 16, 17 plus pounds. You hear all these anglers talk about how many fish they're seeing. You, we see how many they're catching, but you hear Matt saying a few minutes ago, talking to Larry Nixon, he was seeing a lot of them too, you know, 20 and 25 pound, five fish limit swimming around the boat. Wow. Yeah, that was that was definitely a trend on stage. The the amount of anglers that just said, "I've never been to a lake with this many fish." Yeah. It's an aquarium out there. Yeah, it's really amazing because oftentimes when you have a real good fishery, it's for lack of a better way to put it, kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's yep. no big cities around, but Columbia is the capital city of South Carolina, and it's you know ten miles from the shores of Lake Murray. Um, this lake is surrounded with people. Obviously, you see all the homes and and then the, the, the big towns and cities around this lake. So it gets a lot of pressure, but, but you know, hats off to all the people to help try to keep Lake Murray as good as it is. Not, and not a, it's not just a fishing lake. It's a great recreational lake. You'll see a lot of that tomorrow and Sunday. What are we talking? A lot of pontooning? Yes. You name it, there's a lot of jet skiing, a lot of pontooning. Any chance me and you can get in on a little of that, Dave? My pontoon is down at Santee right That's now. Maybe we'll do that next week. Okay. Really help. Sounds like a plan. Still the day, you know. We're in a cut. But, but I know a few people that have pontoons, <laughs> so, so don't tip me with a good time. <laughs> you got you to gotta stay on them because they're going to catch them every day. Especially with how common it is, even if the guys burn through their bedfish, they got new ones coming up. They'll go find them. I mean, it's too many fish in the lake. So, I mean, they're right there. Patrick Walters talking about how many fish are in the lake. Talked to Corey Johnson a little bit yesterday morning before takeoff, before the start of the event, and he was just all smiles. He said, man, this place is full of fish. And, you know, that's that's coming from someone who has spent his life fishing places yeah. that are full of fish. Koya Fujita unofficially took over our Rookie of the Year race as of yesterday. Obviously unofficially, I say, because we award almost fantasy points every day on the website, but it's not official until the end of the tournament, right. meaning that you could be leading a tournament on day one, but by the time the tournament ends, you might be in 30th place. Right. You need to finish in first place to get first place points. But I imagine Koi is going to leave here with a very, very good finish. Koi was leading rookie of the year and moved into second is Cooper Gallant. Which is amazing when you think Joyce Fuentes made a cut and won an event. Yes. Just shows how well they're all fishing. Absolutely. And I can honestly say that since I've been on this side of the desk, so to speak, uh, the rookie, the group of rookies in the Elite Series seems to get better every single year. It's it's just – and, and – I'm looking for the exact same thing next year, especially with the EQs and, and having so many events to qualify. You will have definitely proven yourself to qualify for the leaks through those EQs. What really stands out about Koya's hot start, too, is, I mean, you look at how many Japanese anglers excel in the north where it becomes a lot more finesse. Yes. I mean, for him to potentially have two top tens even he's got one already yeah, but you know he's gonna leave here with a great time. finish and we haven't even got to where you would imagine his style excels. that's a great point that's a good point and even with takumi Ito, what he did i mean is he kind of struggled down south then yes. had some big northern finishes and then kind of put the southern thing together and is still doing that yes. but but the Japanese Prince of Bass Angling, uh, it doesn't matter. No, not to him. I, I'm, I'll be 100% yeah, honest with we'll you. you. Every, you know, every event that a rookie does well, that's great because the pressure on them and, and most often new lakes 
But Seminole, as well as he did at Seminole, and I know that had to be a very, very different look for Koya. Yeah. Lake Seminole was different than most places that, that we even go to in the southeast. And for him to have such a good tournament there was very, very impressive. From our four box, been watching lots of great angling, but there's one angler that has been making our Mercury move of the day, and that is Jake Whitaker. What a day he is having, Davey Height. Yeah, absolutely incredible. And, and I mentioned a little bit earlier, when you come to Lake Murray this time of the year, you know the shad spawn and the herring spawn is going to happen. You think, man, I've got to catch him early, but look what Jake Whitaker did. Didn't get it started early like you would hope, but, man, when he did get it going at 9.56, his first fish, four pounds, nine ounces, and that's just the whole key to success. All those fish are, you know, one three-pounder, and the rest of them are four, solid four, 11, four, nine-pound fish for a total weight so far of 20 pounds, 12 ounces. You get a guy like Lee Livesey, catches 30 bass, but he's got 17 pounds. The biggest five fish, and that's what you've got to focus on. You can't get caught up in catching numbers of fish here on a lake like Lake Murray. You've got to catch the right size, and Jake Whitaker certainly has the mercury move of the day by catching four of the right, excuse me, five of the right size bass. Well, you know what? You can't also get caught up in, in what you got right. You got to point out what we got wrong, Davey Height. And yesterday we talked about how many 20 bags we were going to see. Jake Whitaker had 20 pounds even yesterday, and he was in 16th place in this tournament. Absolutely. 16 bags over. You said seven. I said 10, thinking 17 bags over 20 pounds. Well, it was seven over 20 pounds. Oh, I see. That is. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is wasn't it? That is oh, barroom betting 101 right there. <laughs> you Davey wanted Hyde. the exact number of stringers? I thought, I mean, there was seven. When I looked at those results, I said, see there, there is seven bags over 20 pounds. you got to be more clear on the rules. I, I, I guess so. Better write <laughs> things down around here. <laughs> no, obviously, uh, I was, and I knew it was going to be good. Wait a second. So that means there was, there was definitely 10. We're both right. I totally exactly. agree with you. That's exactly right. I, uh, I know how good Lake Murray has been, especially this year. Since January, it's been amazing, the, the stringers of fish that have come in. But that surprised me yesterday. With the real calm conditions, uh, a lot of the sight fishing I thought was over, but more fish just keep moving up. They just keep moving up. I did talk to one of the anglers yesterday. The, probably the most random comment I have heard so far of Lake Murray. He said, this lake has a lot of dogs around it. Oh, we just saw a dog yeah. in that picture. But I've never thought about that. Maybe it does. But I think I can put a pattern together for you, Davey. <laughs> dogs live in houses where there's a lot of houses. Yep, yep. <laughs> two plus two is four, isn't it? <laughs> Two plus two is four. I mean, I'm sure there's areas where there's wild packs of dogs, but we right. generally don't have tournaments there. <laughs> Sometimes, but not always. Correct. Boy, it is it is amazing. Patrick's just a little bit off of the shoreline itself, but Hunter Shryock is he's got his boat as close as it can physically be to the shoreline and has had it that way basically all day. Fishing in a less than a foot of water. Most of the time. It's like he's, it looks like he's really trying to keep his bait in those shady areas. And as that sun gets higher, that shade gets narrower. Let's see if Matt Robertson... Can catch him one on the glide bait. I heard him say earlier that he caught an eight-pounder in the same area that he's at on the glide bait the first day of practice, but much, much different conditions on day one practice than there has been yesterday and today. A lot more wind and cooler. More... 
was it similar to what we're going to see tomorrow yes. or, or a little more extreme than that? A little more than that. Uh, actually, quite a bit more than that. It was uh, the forecast. The wind really blew here Monday. And uh, I was down on Santee blowing 30 miles an hour at times Monday. The only angler to make every single check last year and two wins last year will join him right now, Brandon Lester. Bridesmaid finish in our Angler of the Year race. I bet there's a lot of dogs there, Davey. If you look at those backyards, they look perfect for those dogs. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> thought about where there's houses, there might be dogs on the water? Come on, man. Bring your A game. Tell me the angler. Tell me the <laughs> angler, please. Who said that to you? I don't want to call him. You know, I know I you don't want to. to. That's I why try I'm not asking. to call guys out. All right. I think it was Logan Latuso. Come on. Oh. Yeah, I do. <laughs> kind of fighting with myself. <laughs> Brandon Lester, uh, speaking of a lot of dogs. I, do I feel like this wave that's spawning right now is probably the last of the last of them. I mean, they've been spawning for a month. But I don't know. I wanted I had some fish over here that uh, I didn't come to yesterday. I hadn't even hadn't been here during the tournament. So I wanted to come over here and at least give it a chance. Let's see what was going on, but I don't know if I'm looking too hot right yet. I found one back there that was maybe a two and a half pound or something like that. I talked a little bit uh, pre-tournament with Ronnie Moore and Tommy Sanders about I really felt like a lot of anglers could just do what they like to do, and that's exactly what Brandon Lester is doing. He really loves to throw a wacky worm around some type of cover, in this case, boat docks. One, one of, one of the best in the world at it. Yeah, and one of those tournaments where it just seems like ang anglers are getting to fish. A lot of them are getting a lot of freedom to fish many different ways this yes. time around. Yes. But atop the leaderboard with 40 pounds, 12 ounces, back-to-back 20-pound -back days has Jake Whitaker atop the leaderboard being chased down by Patrick Walters, Drew Benton, and, well, really, 102 other anglers outside of those. <laughs> or 100. Well, uh, math hasn't been our strong suit this one segment Davey we'll we'll be back in a little bit and I'll find a calculator and abacus somewhere <laughs> so we get better at that marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray and we'll be back in just a few minutes from sunny South Carolina Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is a giant bass! All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Yossi gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Spectacular Friday afternoon here in Lake Murray country, Columbia, South Carolina, the site of our third stop of 2023, the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray and a very busy, busy lake, but a busy leaderboard. We've seen 
It tightened up and a lot of changes, but atop the leaderboard right now, Jake Whitaker, 40 pounds and 12 ounces. Unfortunately, we haven't had a camera with him all day, but I think we can take maps out there and try to make contact with Jake Whitaker right now, a former Elite Series Rookie of the Year and had 20 pounds even yesterday, sitting in 16th place. But another 20 sack here today for Jake Whitaker. Jake Whitaker looking at the map. Looks like he's out around Beards Creek. Jake, looks like things are going pretty good. Give us an update. Uh, things are going great. So, um, you know, I, I found this point in practice, and uh, it has been way better than I thought it would be. But I have way uh, There is still a bunch more. Trying to get one. Quarter in the in the live well that I want to try. And uh, this is little spotty service. We'll watch you keep fishing, Jake. I'm gonna fade off your back. Like he took up. Yeah, I don't think I need to tell him that, Davey. I think he just kept fishing. Uh, he's not only fishing, he's catching. Perfect timing. like this and a little bit bigger. They're just so healthy. I actually caught one just a minute ago that was still spewing eggs. So, uh, I don't know. Let's see. I don't think it's going to help. But it's going to be close. Let's see. According to Bass Track, as small as fish is three pounds, four ounces. Not going to help. Right at three pounds. It'll be close. So, man, just, just a beautiful fish, but there's a ton in there like that. I mean, fish doesn't even look like it's spawned. So, I don't know. I'm liking what I'm seeing, though. But uh, it's just like every so often they, you know, every five to ten minutes they come up schooling. They're schooling again. And there's some big ones in there. But uh, it's just a crapshoot. I've had several, you know, big ones today jump over my stuff, not get not get hooked up. So, you know, it's just a, it's just one of those games you play. But this is not how I would tip a heron spawn tournament. Uh, sitting on one point is usually not what you do, but when they're in there as thick as they are, it's kind of hard to hard to leave. So we're going to stick around here and see if we can't get one more upgrade. What uh, Jake is talking about there is, you know, there's a lot of fish on this one point, and it's been real good to him for two days. It, it would be hard to find one one point, even on a lake as good as Lake Murray is, to last four days. But a lot of our one-day events are fish just like this. Anglers get on one or two points, maybe rotate back and forth with only you know two places um, to try to catch those five bigger fish. From our unofficial tournament leader, Jake Whitaker. We'll head over to Hunter Shryock, who's having an incredible tournament here this week. And as you said, Davey Hyde, I mean, he's as close yeah, to shore as we've seen oh. any angler. He, he really is, and it's amazing. And could be a little shad spawn happening there, the way he's staying so close to shore and really focusing on shade. Big one. Oh my gosh, she's around it. Just let her go, Hunter. Let her go. Oh, if he can get his rod around this. No. It'll be tough. No. Come back. Come back. Look at, look oh, at, he's look got at. her out. Oh, 
Who says bass anglers aren't fleet footed? <laughs> That was How fun to watch, this? I must admit. That was very fun to watch. Look at this. I think she got out to like two feet of water at one point. <laughs> she was laying on her side on the rocks when he got his hand on her. Nice one. Thank you, sir, for your pet. Mama's fish, two pounds, six ounces. That'll certainly Dude, what a cluster. <laughs> I'm going to put it on this side. I ain't calling. I'm, I'm going to call. I'm going to get the boat off the rocks here. Oh. Take that rod out of your hands. Yes. I, I, How, I, I mean, promise you, I thought that for five times. Don't pick that dude, rod up. One fish surfaces and you just react oh, and cast and things would exactly. go wrong. But everything is going so, so right for Hunter Shryock right now. He is your power pole replay of the day. Stick handled that bass. And it looked like he was going to lose it like three times. Yeah, it really did. So no. watching these anglers on Lake Murray no. catch fish after fish, you think, gosh, that's got to be so easy. No. You know, if you've never been to Lake Murray, you're just thinking, oh, there's so many fish and they're so easy. But when you see an angler do something like this, the way he landed this fish, you see that they are true professionals. They are elite bass anglers. That would have been real easy to lose that fish or break that fish off. He did the right thing, let the fish swim around a little bit till it got back in place to bring outside of that dock area and right along the edge of those rocks. So good job, Hunter Shrop. Definitely the power pole replay of the day so far. As long as he doesn't make a cast. <laughs> no, I think he's calling now. How big is this one? He even was nice enough to tell the homeowner, thank you for letting me borrow your pet for a few hours. And the homeowner was happy to let him. I mean, he was very jovial. <laughs> Solid fish there for Hunter. Smallest fish, two pounds, six ounces. That's one, definitely man. a two pound cull. You got a little juice hole on the bank. Oh my gosh. We, uh, a lot of times those things don't go your way. And uh, when it bit, it went straight to deep water, wrapped around that, that piling. It's actually square too. And when they get square, they tend to cut into the wood itself and uh 10 pound trialing that's the second time today i think we pulled one out it's like goat rope yeah <laughs> i mean it went behind the piling and just as soon as i started to just keep pressure on it it went around the second piling so now we got an s section going on almost to the steps i mean it's a complete mess that's that's exactly what happened but we got it out and uh you know, the, the only thing I can say in those situations is just to keep pressure, don't keep pulling harder, but just keep steady pressure on those fish. And eventually they work themselves back towards where their the pressure is coming from. They're not gonna continuously swim away from it. So they kind of swim out. Makes it look like I know what I'm doing, but that was, you gotta have things go right sometimes. And we've had things go right today. Some things go wrong, but we still got a lot of time so we're gonna go put these rods to the test, go skip a, a worm around and throw a choppo and see what happens. We're seeing enough of them right now. They're everywhere. It's just a matter of getting one to bite. So I'm excited, that, that was good. We needed that fish, we need, we need one more big one. So stay tuned, we'll see what happens. I'm sure it'll be interesting before we, before we check in. Complete mess. Complete mess. A dog on the dock watching him catch that one. <laughs> oh. Cameraman's fallen. Did they get that? It's got to have you fallen. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Unreal. Call cameraman. out the cameraman. I think he was running around telling, move, 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 move. And he's trying to film. Trials and tribulations of a Bassmaster cameraman. One, one sign of a great cameraman, though, they never show themselves falling. Well, they it, show the anglers falling. You fall real bad if you show yourself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
Hunter Shryock charging up that leaderboard. And with the leaderboard in mind, let's have a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now. And as you see, four anglers with 40 pounds. Wow, look how close that is. We have the top three. One ounce between the top three right now. This is, I mean, are we at Lake Oneida? Did we show up at Champlain? This is like a northern tournament, Davey Height. It really is. Does not surprise me. This lake is absolutely wonderful right now. What an absolute paradise in sunny South Carolina. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. That's right, it's Bassmaster Live. Ladies and gentlemen, continuing our coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite here. Second day action from four days of fishing on the schedule here for the third stop of the year. Our full field is out there right now. Getting a little closer to weigh in time, but much business to be taken care of between now and then. Take a look at our leaderboard, unofficial though it may be. We figure it's pretty close. And Jake Whitaker on top of that leaderboard has sat there for a good while now, having a great day. Uh, over 20 pounds caught today. Over 20 pounds in his live. Well, closer to 21. We figure Patrick Walters, Hunter Shryock, we just saw moments ago with Dave and Davey. Uh, Dave and Davey, hey, hats off. Good job again today. Oh, yeah. Benton, Robertson, Iconelli, Carl Jockinson, all the rest. And uh, man, I, I, uh, Mark Zona, I think. We are promised that it's about to go down this afternoon, but let's see what we've done already with our Yamaha Midday Report. Yeah, before we trench in for the last few hours here on Bassmaster Live, day number two, Lake Murray, let's kind of rewind what's going on today with some of your leaders from day number one looking at Brandon Lester and the best way to put it, it's been a bit, a bit of a grimy day for Brandon Lester. Seen him working a drop shot, a wacky worm, and just kind of hodgepodge and around. And he said, a lot of those herring fish so hard to catch seeing a lot of them like a lot of our leaders but not putting those big ones in the boat unofficially just under 11 pounds so far for brandon lester You're gonna need some of those late day bites that we heard were very prevalent on day number one yeah he was quick to get a limit but just as you say mark zona could not get the size going on this day brandon lester coming off his best year ever with the bass master elite series Next up, let's take a look at Hunter Shryock. We just saw him with a rather dramatic catch a few minutes ago. We'll get to that. Yes, definitely starting his day off right. Big one, right about five pounds for Hunter Shryock. And that was in about, man, that was about the first 10 minutes of competition. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the anglers that it really appears has something going with an actual shad spawn, not a herring gig out near the main lake and definitely getting a lot of bites on a chopo backing it up with some big dock fish getting very very fortunate right here great job landing that big one while the dave and davy show was going on great fish catch and how about matt robertson our leader after the fishing was done on day number one with 25 and a half pounds yes really kind of don't know what will ever happen with matt robertson and yet it's fair to say tommy after catching 25 pounds yesterday really from noon until the weigh-in I don't know if Matt Robertson is uh, allergic to the Bassmaster Live cameras, but every time he's been on, it has been a weird, strange show. And today, fishing next to Lee Livesey, this was about mid-morning, getting some of that hot apple pie with a Carolina rig. Leaving that, fishing next to Larry Nixon right there, the general, and catching a big one, a well-needed big one, where there was one point during our break Matt Robertson said, I have a five bass limit for 30 pounds around the boat and have not caught one of them. Yeah, Robertson, uh, about 13 and a half pounds, somewhere in that region. And Patrick Walters started steady, early and steady today to the man from South Carolina. Yeah, and really kind of watching him, Patrick Walters' day, a lot of finesse fishing, and he said, I got to survive yeah. days one and days Woo. two with the really light winds here on Lake Murray. And he has been pretty much solely concentrating on the herring spawn, really hasn't done anything else. And the one thing about Patrick Walters that Davey Height said, you're going to have to beat this guy to hold the trophy. Well, Drew Benton has put on a show for sure, a great day number one, and he came out firing very early today on day number two. 
Yeah, and kind of like a little bit like Brandon Lester, staying up shallow, kind of eye spying around for largemouth, a little bit of fry garden early this morning. The one thing you could say is Drew Benton did not have a ton of big ones locked on bed coming into day two, but definitely uh, getting it done, finding some new ones, doing what he does best, pretty much sight fishing all day long here today. Drew Benton owns one victory with Bassmaster Elite Series down in the state of Texas on the Colorado River in Lake Travis. Is this going to be his time this go round? Well, he is doing his best to hang in there. He's done a good job and kept himself basically in the top three all day long. And that is your Yamaha Midday Report. Great to see you. Maybe the weekend has started for you. Let's celebrate that and watch what's about to go down out here. Tommy Sanders in the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, of course, along with Ronnie Moore and Mike Sukon. Ronnie, very, very close at the top of that leaderboard there. We are headed for maybe, maybe a photo finish down at the wire there. It's hard to say that this tournament could have an uptick going into the weekend, but with this weather, the wind possibly kicking up a little bit, you know, lower skies with clouds, it could get even better, which means this tight race at the top could be very interesting as we make it to Saturday and Sunday. And what's also interesting, you guys were talking about on the Yamaha Midday Report, guys like Drew Benton, Hunter Shryock, doing things differently than just the herring spawn, which is very promising, knowing that we could have a couple yeah. different things coming and going this weekend for patterns wise. Yeah, it just makes it more interesting. And Such, I know with, with the volatility on the leaderboard, you're watching the points races. You betcha. We have a little flip flop on both of them. The angler of the year, Carl Jacobson, has taken the lead. He's gained 33 spots today, being in seventh place right now. Tyler Rivette has fallen down. And in the rookie of the year, Fujita has fallen. And Mr. David Gaston, who seemed like he was very upset about his finish yesterday, uh, yeah. has climbed up and is in 12th place right now and has taken over that lead. David right. Gaston was one of Patrick Walters' fantasy picks when he had to pick oh, up that's for his right. own yes. yeah. yeah, a good he point right David there. Gaston. And Mark Zona, I mean, what, what have you seen that has surprised you about today? I mean, it's, it's been terrific. The fishing both days has been terrific. Has anything sort of struck you as being not expected? I think what Ronnie kind of tipped off, it's, it's going to be really cool going into semifinal Saturday with a lot of diversity in this tournament right now. If you kind of look at the top two, Jake Whitaker and Patrick Walters, keying on that herring spawn, and then you look at a Hunter Shryock, which looks like a lot of his game is more of a traditional old school shad spawn with mixed in with some boat docks, and then Drew Benton, who is just eye spying spawning largemouth. I really think looking at the top of that leaderboard and Ronnie, you were talking about this a lot earlier. I know Davey tipped it off. Do you try to cover as many points as possible, as many humps as possible, like a guy like Patrick Walters, or do you dig in like Jake Whitaker? It's going to be fun to watch those two do battle tomorrow. And what will be, you know, the key? Trenching in on one key area that has 100, what appears, three to four pounders like Whitaker or Patrick Walters just rotating areas over and over. Very good storylines and diversity right now on Murray. One more we're going to talk. Well, go ahead, Ronnie. I was going to say, if it, it seems like unless it's in the heat of the summer, full, full post spawn where you can run a bunch of topwater spots, that's the deal, that's the gig. Yeah. But when you get to this time of the year, if you have sunny skies and no wind and they're not necessarily actively blowing up all day, you maybe need to ride it out until you get that weather, which we may get this weekend. We'll see some things maybe open up in the first two hours tomorrow, which will be awesome. On that map, all the six anglers we're in the boat with all day long. Let's uh, take it out to Brandon Lester, as we say, just, uh, just under 11 pounds. Still waiting for the big ones to show up today. Brandon's still in the top 25, despite just losing some ground today, of course, but not having any bigger fish than that. But. And kind of looking at Brandon Lester, and I really think what you kind of tipped off right there, Such, is I think the Koya Fujita thing, 
boy, as well as he caught him yesterday before noon, the reports Ronnie was getting via text. A little bit surprised at Fujita's day. Taking a look at Drew Benton, I spying one. Well, did you think Ravet could continue his fry garden fish? I, I don't know that he had a lot of areas to do it, Sue. Right. It's not, you know, it, 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 he had a key ingredient in there, and he said that he thought it was milfoil. I don't know. If How that much was of that? I'm looking at. Uh, I, I just don't know if he had enough of that to go around. Oh, thank you, boy. Yeah, at 10.30 yesterday, Z, we got a text from the water that said he had 19 and a half pounds Keoya Fajita. Right. So by 10.30 yesterday, he had that, and he would love to have that by 3.30 today. So, with a little bit surprised by that. Yeah. Nope. What I can do. Get up there. No help for Drew Benton. This is, it, for the people, Brandon Lester said it today, Drew Benton said yeah, it before. These, I really think these sight fish are going away. Like it's, it's, there's not as many pulling Although, up. They're losing that pattern, but it could be a perfect storm that you lose this pattern as the weather's going to change and the herring spawn might get easier or more available. The fact that they could now transition seamlessly without having maybe a tough, tough day could be a possibility for them in the morning if they have, if they ride that low light or wind conditions tomorrow. As we watch this hookup once again, I will say that we heard, what, about an hour and a half ago, Patrick Walters offered an, a different viewpoint there. He said, the, hey, the guys who are bed fishing are catching them out, but they're, they're going to fill up again. They're going to yeah, find them again. It's just if it's going to, you know, Monday or Tuesday, you know, like if it's yeah. too late, that's the one problem. Yeah. Or Look at that fish right there from Drew Benton. The only thing that you really don't or at least we have not seen with Drew Benton. He was anchored with three big ones off bed yesterday. It seems like there's very solid quality that's still spawning. A lot of that three and a quarter to three and a half pound males. Boy, there is one thing you are not seeing though. You are not seeing a lot of big females that it looks like these guys that are doing this like Drew Benton would need going into the weekend. Okay. It, it seems like you know, day one, day two, they might have three of their biggest five be from the bed. And as we get to the weekend, it could be their two smallest come from the bed. You know, if their threes the male, stay there, that he is it's doing gotta be his your smallest. job. I've caught him twice. And uh, every time I catch him, a female rolls up there just like, you, you know, pretty as you please. But I've got five in the box. So I can't put him in the box and he's a quarter pound smaller than my smallest one right now, but I am tempted to throw that one back and put him in the box because I think I can catch her. I just had her bite. I just shot, got her to bite. Got her. Just like that. Tommy, what I meant is there are some big females up on bed. So I went to big females up on the bed. It's got to get it out. When I was right, when I was wrong. When I was right, when I was wrong. He's lower scale. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. We just freaking got her. Oh. Got her a shock bite, baby. That one there will help the cold. New leader. It's bigger than five pounds. Yes, sir. Five and a half. Hey, and you really needed to listen to what happened there. I know a lot of our Ooh, sight fishermen and women that. that are watching this heard him. He caught the mail two times and was tempted. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. That is the biggest sight fishing bass we've seen this tournament. Oh, yeah. Right on back. 
And that one wasn't a bad one. That one looks bigger than a 270 something. I think that's on the wrong. This is the wrong one. I got mixed up somewhere. Yeah, that's a three pounder. Number one goes back. Because they were so close, I balance beamed them. That's a 270. Make sure though. I had two that were so close, I just balanced beamed them. Yeah, that one goes back. It's a five pounder and a two and three quarter goes back. That's a that's a two and a half pound call. Let's go. Three pound lead. Right? Let's go. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool fish catch right there. Okay, so let's kind of set up what happened there. He caught the male two times, which he said was about a quarter pound lighter than his smallest one in the live well. But he said the male kept going back to the bed and wouldn't let the female get back in there. And it, as he was kind of breaking down what his thoughts were, were trying to pull that male away from the nest. She pulled back in and this happened. That is why Drew Benton is absolutely one of the best on earth when they are locked on. But it's just nice not seeing Drew Benton fishing for herring bass and sight fishing in April. All is normal, yep. not staring at his depth finder. Good stuff right there, Power Pole Replay. Of the day. Yes, that's an old school favorite right there for hey, sure. We have had a good mix this event. We've been blessed yeah. oh. that we're seeing them with our and eyes Tommy. and with the graph, not just with the graph. I I'm going to tell you, Tommy, me, me saying that there was not many big females rolling up on beds. Drew Benton pretty much said, shut your mouth, boy. boy. Shut your mouth, boy. <laughs> Good one right there. Oh, that's fun. That is a lot that of fun. That was awesome. Oh, man. Can't wait to get back. We have to take a break here in just a minute, but let's take a look at our unofficial leaderboard as it stands right now. It's not been quite updated yet because that is going to reflect a Drew Benton big move up right at or near the top. Jake Whitaker, though, and Patrick Walters, Hunter Shryock, Drew Benton, all above 40 pounds. That is what's pretty uh, pretty remarkable at this point in time. Matt Robertson, the leader from yesterday, still waiting for more big ones to show up, and we'll show back up right here in just a couple of minutes. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Fishing history helps sometimes and it hurts. And it was to kind of put both of those together this week and fish new water and fish the stuff that kind of got me to where I'm at today. My goal was to be just consistent through the whole week. Um, I think my bite was gonna hopefully, was gonna get better, but um, it's just, you can't, Murray's fishing so good right now, you can't go catch 14 or 16 pounds and stay in it. You know, you gotta catch 17 to 18 every single day just to be consistent. And that was the goal was just, you know, play the long game and be consistent all week. Back on the water, getting closer and closer to the end of our day, but plenty of fishing time left to be sure. Drew Benton having taken over the lead. Big one off the bed right there. We just saw a big female. Jake Whitaker hanging in there. What a day for him. Walters, we just saw Patrick Walters, a nice feature there with him. Hunter Shryock, Matt Robertson, our leader to start the day now down in fifth place. So let's take ourselves back out on the lake and carry with Vegeta. Came here with the lead and rookie of the year standings. Had a bit of a slow morning and early afternoon and well, fell out of that lead. Right. And Ronnie's correct. He's still sitting on four bass. Yes, sir. Oof. Anything will go to the bottom line for Vegeta. Back. Back.
Yes. Six. Six pound. Yes. Wow. Oh, six. Yes, sir. Good way to fill out your limit. Wow. Well, we had heard the presence of big ones later in the day on day one, and definitely the case here today. Six pounds going to go to the bottom line right now for Fujita, who had a really, really slow morning. Man, that is a giant. Good one. We'll be back in the top 10, back at the rookie of the year lead. Appreciate that, Such, and I'm going to actually throw this to Ronnie. Ronnie. Pretty much all we have is six to 10 foot of water, forward facing sonar, swimming a jig head, right? So far, yes. Got it, got it, got it. Very vague, but tells a lot. Man, that was a good one. That's a really good one. Very light line. Tommy, you could kind of tell he's pretty efficient with a spinning rod, too. Yeah, he's, a, he's kind of an ace yeah. for that, isn't he? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Well, if you just picked up with us, that man right there, Kyoyo Fujita, came in with the lead. Rookie of the year, always hotly contested, especially in this, this era. And uh, had lost it over the course of the day. And yes. has regained it in a big, didn't like second place. Didn't like it at all. You know, we, we talked about Fujita at the Lake Seminole Tournament. Where he's obviously pretty as efficient as he is with a spinning rod. He's pretty good shallow banging bait casters, power fishing. And Taku told us at the end of the season last year when he qualified for the lead series that he is 100% the real deal from Japan. Oh, get a look at some of those baits right uh -huh. there. We go. Oh my kind of been waiting for that a little bit. Ah, look at that. Uh huh. Tommy, that thing on the left and the right, I'm not sure I've ever seen those things. <laughs> that's, that's, They're not, they not may have landed really from sure another planet. <laughs> I'm not sure. Hats off to the cameraman getting us those shots. I'm not sure Koya would want us to see some of those things, but. Yeah, well, cat's out of the bag now. Although we don't know what they are or where to get them. We don't know what they are, Tommy. That's the problem. <laughs> yep, yep. Maybe we can get a really clo close up shot of them real quick. Mm. Anthony, let us see those. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get real. Look at that little thing on the left. What is the thing on the right? Whoa. I don't know. It's fixing to go. <laughs> I think somebody what got caught that peeking thing there. On the, that thing on the right was like out of Prometheus, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> or Professor Zoidberg from the, the uh, what's the animated series? Yeah. Did our You're camera man my right beak. there? <laughs> right. The island of is that the uh, is that the cubed 
skirted bait that he was using at Seminole, the no, one no. that's, that's not looked, the exact one? more like a squid. It looked different. Yeah, but I mean. Like uh, Island of Dr. Moreau. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that other one looked like a dolphin beak nose type of deal. That's off to our cameraman, sneaking that shot in for us. We yeah, kind of wait for that all day, Tommy. Absolutely. Tip of the cap. How about a big Good mover, work. Matty Wong? Third biggest bag of the day, 1910 from 66 to 15th. Wow. Going down there, Scott Martin with 18 pounds. I think uh, Keith Combs' That's fist nice just came point. in with 18. See, you're glad you got the seat now. Yeah. Trust me, I'd be in I believe that was cameraman Hunter Lindsay that got us that shot of Koya's baits. We're Good gonna job. Good job. see if we can't get so a few more of those. So if he disappears, then we know what happened. You know, yeah. <laughs> That's a good to know. Yeah. That's also one thing that makes our international anglers, especially the Japanese anglers, dangerous is when you are on heavily pressured schools or places that are getting fished a lot, mm -hmm. they know that 90% of their stuff, no one They've else in the field seen. probably has yes. them. Yeah, yes. the fish yeah. haven't yes. seen yeah. either, right, Ronnie? I mean, you want to, yes. you always want to find that secret tactic or the secret spot, but if you, if you can't, just use baits that no one else has access to for the yeah. most part. Well. And Suits, you're, you're right about that, man. It's pressured, you know, we've heard it from all, even our leaders, how hard these fish are to catch. You know, like guys pan, like Fujita are showing them something. Hit them with a pan, it's pretty 99% chance they've never seen it before. Mm. It's like when you take a kid to a pond and he puts a pink soft plastic on the back of a spinnerbait rigged all messed up and you, they catch one and you're like, how? I like, wouldn't, yeah. it's because no one's ever thought to throw that in there, I promise. At least that's what I tell myself. And we already have the bait names and where they're made from. Z entering the text. Wow, so that's really awesome. nice. I have to share that. Like that, hmm. Ronnie. You After know, I've got to sift the... through it. Yeah, I got to sift through it. Make sure. I'm a little bit of a JDM addict. Love all of those little finesse baits. Mentioned Scott Martin. He just culled up to 19.4 from 55th to 12th. That's a move. Holy cow. Hmm. Boy, it just seems to get tighter and tighter here. Our top five all within two pounds of one another that stands right now. Unofficially. There's a leaderboard. You can see it. Drew Benton, Jake Whitaker, Patrick Walters, Hunter Schreiner. And Matt wow. Robinson all within a couple of pounds. Fujita moving back up there from down to the 25th place. Jason Williamson spent some time with him yesterday in the boat, and he is making it, taking a stand today for sure. Mike Iaconelli hanging tough in there as well. We got plenty more to come from here at Lake Murray. Yeah! Order! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. What a day, what a tournament so far here on Lake Murray. That's what that's what lives here and lots of fish of that size. And uh, wow, not always easy to catch, but they are here. That is for sure. On the Saluda River here, just west of Columbia, South Carolina, and this water goes on through the dam, forms up with the Broad River to, uh, to form the uh, Congaree, which creates the water for where we'll be next week. 
Santee Cooper Lane. Do you just know where every river in America originates? He really does. From? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> he might do. I, I had a chip implanted in the uh, face of my skull. You are on point with yeah. that. I mean, I learned more about hey, Ronnie, rivers. Mess around and find out, dog. Yeah, there you go, dog. Find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm somewhere on that chart for sure. <laughs> I mean, up in the dirt for Hunter Shroud. Wow. Coming towards you. Okay. Oh, she's barely hooked. Please, Lord, come on. Stop. Stop that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Gosh, she's still alive. I dropped her back in the dang lake. Act like you done this before, Hunter. That Man, spot looked need right. To That's a four. Replay that. Oof. That's a four. We're going to call Ronnie. Big Brown. <laughs> To confirm and make sure after the dock catch Actually, when he trolled away that he did take care of business. Just get in the boat and we'll go up here. I think it's a four pounder. Mister, you've been weed eating way too long. You've been over there, over here. <laughs> you gotta be tired. No, it tell me one good, thing I'm though. gonna say about that fish landing. Yeah, Don't give them a kiss when they got a face no, full of no. Chapo in their grill. It's not a good idea. Yeah. Watch this. Don't, yeah. For the kids at home, don't yeah. do that. No, that's, there's other times you can do that. Not, not when they got all the time. They'll swim back, I promise. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, that could have got, oh got a little bit <laughs> sketch. Yeah. All day long. That's the thing though, is it just takes a couple, couple of the right bites. Good thing is, is I really don't know how, to, how else to catch them. We added something else to the arsenal today though, which is good. I think that fish, I think that fish helps us keep us in the ball game for, we have to have an extraordinary day, that 25, 27, but with what I'm seeing, you almost kind of expect it to happen. It's just when. Um, they're here. They're, the, the fish are in this lake to do it. So it's just a matter of right place at the right time. And that's it. I got a mess. I got braid jammed in between my treble hook and the bait. <sighs> what do you think of that? That was the sickest bite, was it not? It ate it like a seven. How big is it? Uh oh.
Yes. Just like we said, Tommy, it doesn't matter if it's the first hour or the last hour. It's oh, yeah. all in play this week. We'll see guys who started strong in the morning, have a lull, and we think they're out of it, and the final afternoon pays off for them, and they're back in the game. It's just the way it's fishing this time of year. Right there for Fujita. Things definitely heating up, like you said, Ron. If you kind of look at some of the big ones we've seen, one off a of bed with Drew Benton about 45 minutes ago then a big one on a shade line with hunter shryock and then one on a jig head minnow in nine to 14 foot of water we think with fujita a lot of different things starting to play and you notice how very close even though he's fishing a little deeper than the, a lot of our other leaders in this tournament very close to that main lake What's cool is Hunter Shrock's locking a top water in his hand for the most part on some of these catches. And the same guys are doing the same thing at the end of points, totally different area of the lakes. Now this is back in the present here. Kind of just watch the way he fishes when we swing north. Seems like he will be a big player. Mm. Tommy, we almost got a look at that bait that ran up his line right there. I was, I know. <laughs> I saw was that. watching real close. Yeah. I figure you're screenshotting all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> I already did. Don't okay. Worry. I already I did. Wow. <sighs> Five pounder. Yes. Back. Mm. We will yes. be with him tomorrow for sure. All right. 
There's no question about that. Yeah. Oh, fine. Uh, four, four, twelve. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, take a load off. Yeah. I mean, just chill. Yeah. Zoom, maybe he's got the, the bait names and the locations, the pattern written down. Zoom in on that paper. <laughs> can't read it while we learn how to read Japanese. <laughs> hey, I'll screenshot it. We'll Sega, it what's that say? He needed 5-4 to tie Bent in the top, but he should be in second place. Tommy, I mean, we got clarification. I talked about it earlier that Fujita probably did not want to talk to me last night. It was actually he did not want to talk to you. Oh, okay. So, so he's on you, off you. Bye. You just have to give him the prospector voice tonight, Tommy, if you want to get yeah. some info from him. I'm going to have to disguise my voice for sure. Yep. Hey, well, Coyle. depending <laughs> who he does and who he doesn't want to talk to, there's no denying what we just saw from him right there. I think that's what it is right there, Mark Zona. Yeah, no doubt about it. And really, one of the things we opened Holy up with for this event, for this Elite Series tournament on yeah. Lake Murray, would yeah. somebody get on something kind yeah. of oddball that nobody else is doing? And if you really watch the footage, and you gotta watch it very close with Fujita, is he is fishing, fair to say guys, looking at this Marathon yes. Peak performance, he's fishing for a bass that it doesn't appear anybody else is fishing for. Really six, nine to, I don't know, but let's call it six to 17 feet of water. Yes. With it looks like yes. a little swimming worm, a little swimming minnow is the best yes. we could say right now. But Marathon Peak Performance, pretty much he has free reign of that technique right, right now because we have not seen anybody else doing that. Marathon Peak Performance, Koya Fujita, a big swing in the leaderboard right there. Fujita now becomes the third angler of the day to reach the 20 pound mark there. And and that uh, leaderboard is updated. We'll reflect him in second place in there, as a matter of fact, right behind Drew Benton, Shryock, Whitaker, Fujita, Walters, all comprising our top five and very, very, very tight scores. Yeah! Hustler! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Good morning, folks at home. Look at this fish, all white. That's awesome. I pre-fished here a month ago, and I tell you what, I want the Bassmaster Elite Series to come here in March. It would be the most phenomenal event um, because all these fish that we're catching are pre-spawn, and it's amazing. So I spent about five days here a month ago, but I also spent um, a little bit of time in 2019 before our Lake Hartwell event. I was preparing for it. And, you know, this sets up kind of like Hartwell, but it's just so much better because it doesn't have spotted bass. So there's all big largemouth. The, the three to six pound class fish in this lake is by far the best bass fishing lake in the Southeast. Thank you, sir, for your pet. Dude, what a cluster. <laughs> Hunter Shryock, he's from Tennessee, but uh, I tell you what, he loves the state of South Carolina, especially this week. He's had good uh, good days at Winya Bay as well. He's uh, had some good Ronnie, success here. Ronnie, correct me if I'm, did, Tommy, did he, did he kind of hate on the spotted bass right there? I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't I hear know. you, Z. Did, did he kind of hate on the spotted bass right there? I no, felt like he did a little bit. Maybe, maybe a touch, maybe a touch, but without thinking about it too much. I would, that's possible, let's get back out to Drew Benton. You cannot really minimize what he's done today. No doubt. Drew Bent with a solid day, six pounder in his live well. But ooed up now. Come here, 
baby. Gotcha. Had her hair lips. Reason why I didn't want to boat swing her. Not that big, but three and a half probably. And spawned out. Golly, stop. Stop. Come on, dude. Three and a half. Gets rid of number four. Give me a half pound. Actually, I need to check to make sure number four is really what that thing says. Really, he has had supreme conditions yesterday and today to do exactly what he's been doing, I spy him. Gonna be interesting, Tommy, to see how he manages tomorrow with the wind. A lot of wind gonna be coming tomorrow, might change this a lot. Yeah, that's that's the big thing that's kind of looming over the horizon, literally. But what kind of approaches are gonna be affected most? What will be helped? What might be compromised a little bit by some wind and rain? And different weather scheme. Matt Robertson started the day with the lead, 25 and a half day one. Matt has definitely kept that glide bait really honest today. I have not seen many fish catches from it. Had one big one during our break swat at it. Robertson, good season last year. A couple of top fives at Owyhee, Chickamauga. Just such a such a different lake than places we go. You see Robertson catching him yesterday on a cane walker, now throwing a glider from Fujita, who's around similar deals, kind of staying near main lake points and pockets, throwing what looks like six pound line and yeah. really lighter lure. Very, very, very diverse, cool techniques we're gonna have going into the weekend.
put a new hook on. Come on. Less than 45 minutes fishing time left for our anglers and first flight to go out today. There are four flights, fourth flight anglers will be going at it till 4.30 local time, Eastern time in South Carolina. Tommy, let's play the game. Okay. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take 40 pounds to get a camera for sure tomorrow, isn't it? Oh, I think definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ronnie? Soup? To get a camera? Uh, yeah. Top, 10. top 10? Yeah. Top 10. Yeah, I think it will. I think it'll take 40 and uh -huh. I bet you it takes I bet you it does indeed double plus some. It'll actually go up. I think it'll be more than 34.10 for the cut line. Wow. Yeah, right now it's De Palma and 50th. Or actually, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. 10. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. They've got the. No, stay with it. No, 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 no stay with it. No. Stay with it. Own it. 30 pounds. And your I, think, I think it'll be right at that then. I don't think it'll go up. I think I mean, it'll be right at 34. It. You sold well, it. Well, I was top, looking man. and it has 30th. We got this big old bass banner right in the middle of the leaderboard. It looks like it was the Dead divider. Gummit. Yeah. Yeah. Send Jim Sexton an email oh, on that. Uh, Chad an email too. That's some guys who don't have bass track who haven't reported a fish yet. So really, really Man, good day with Hunter Shryock. And come on, fish. you know what's strange is is what a, he said on his last up. fish catch. You know it's coming. You just don't know when and where it's coming. Mm -hmm. And what, as simple as that sounds, that is really the whole story of this lake. Uh -huh. You know the explosion's coming. You just don't know what corner it's going to be around. And what's funny is the, the, the region of the lake that Shryock has done mo most of his damage today there are three other leaders within a mile and a half of him doing something totally different. And there's about another five boats that are not catching him really at all, comparatively at all. So the region that he's been in out on Murray has definitely applied to other leaders in this tournament, just doing something totally different. Mm -hmm. So how weatherproof is his scheme that he's got going here? I, I think I think more than anything, Tommy, I think he's just fishing differently than everybody else around him. I think a lot of the other boats are really concentrating on the herring spawn yeah. and, and and he's just fishing different. You know, his is a besides, you know, mixing in a couple dock fish here and there. His is a lot more traditional shad spawn, which I don't think a lot of other guys are doing in that section of the lake. So he should be able to do this tomorrow, right? I think so. Figure out I a think way. so. too early to remind you that tomorrow we will be coming your way at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on FS1. For three hours coverage time and then big one on coverage Sunday. after that. What? And then we'll have a big one on Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. Five and, and now we've just been protected by on Sunday. It. All followed by coverage and right really here on Bassmaster.com. Looking at your top 12 right now, it is it was not the case early this morning when we saw a couple solid stringers caught early for the top 12, but not all of them, but almost all, you know, if you look at the big weights today, they are very main lake oriented, not fishing obviously that much deeper, but very close to the main drag. And you could see that with Shryock right there.
Watching Bass Track, guys, there are some, we've got some oh, yeah. South Carolina guys and some blueback herring experts that are going to be on camera tomorrow as we bring it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon. But there are some names down that leaderboard that are a little shocking. Guys like Brian New, guys like Hank Cherry, guys that you expect to show up. KJ Queen, David Williams as well, that we'd expect to be no doubt in the top 50, maybe contending for this event. And it had me thinking how many of the highest percentage guys or what was the highest percentage guy that missed the cut in each of our first four events of the season. Obviously, we still have time to go. This could possibly change, maybe prove me wrong, but looking at Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing and Mercury Drain the Lake, some of the biggest percentage guys that missed this season, the highest percentage that missed the top 50 cut or missed the top 25 for the Classic, Hank Cherry at Okeechobee, 20% missed it there in the first event. Brandon Polinick, 24%. He got his one of his career worst finishes, 97th at Lake Seminole. Then Carl Jacobson at uh, Knoxville, for the Bassmaster Classic, fishing in his now home state, 40%, just missing the cut there. And then Brian knew this week, 70%. He was the highest picked by over 20 five or 24 percent more than Patrick Walters, Brandon Cobb, and possibly down in the 80s or 90s today and will not make that top 50 cut unless something changes. He has a marshal with him today, but still has nothing on Bass Trek. He may be having the time of his life and making that cut, but as of midday today, <laughs> not on Bass Trek in the cut. 70% of the folks <laughs> will be hurting that they chose Brian New. And I know he's normally one of the stalwarts. Uh, such a great young career so far, but to miss a cut is not good. To miss a cut in your backyard, lives in Saluda, South Carolina. I know this will hurt a little bit more for Brian New, but maybe we'll have him on a guest, you know, at some point this weekend, possibly to break down where he missed and where some of these guys are hitting this week. What he would have done differently. I always like that hindsight approach. All right. Big misses. Did you pick him, Tommy? Such? Yes, I did. Oh, yeah. Of course I did. Okay. Of course group I did. It was groupy. So did Such. So did I everybody. Know, I mean, he was, he was like the, the prohibitive favorite in Bucket E. There's no question about that. Uh, not so much, though, the way it turned out. Drew Benton on top of that leaderboard right now. Drew Benton just forging ahead on this day number two. It's been a huge day for him. Kyoyo Fujita, one, three fish, bang, 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 just like that, that put him right back in the top 10 and all the way up into second place. Hunter Shryock, we just saw him do some great, great things out here. We got more fishing yet to come. Yeah! A quarter! No way! Live coverage of the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Rapala. Well, the early ones out in our field are running out of time. They're down to their last 15, 20 minutes of fishing time out there on Lake Murray. But man, has Lake Murray been something else since we started yesterday for our first of four days of fishing. This is day two. Today, the weigh-in is huge because you got to be in the top 50 to have another crack. And I guarantee you, every one of our 103 anglers would love another day, at least here on Lake Murray. Of course, the ultimate gold, make it to championship Sunday. Guy who's making a pretty good case for Belonging there on Championship Sunday is this man right here. What he's done in the last about hour, 20 minutes, Kyoyo Fujita has been remarkable. And it's obvious he is a lot more offshore than anybody we've seen in this tournament. You'll see the light shade of shallow water. Bus? Strapo? Oh, maybe bus. Maybe I'm safe. Yes! Maybe three half. Uh, 
Six will help to the tune of six ounces. Yeah, one pound up. <laughs> We've seen a couple different patterns this week. Some guys up shallow, some guys offshore, some guys looking at their electronics, some guys not. They're able to see the activity visually with their eyes, whether it's the herring, the shad spawn, sight fish. So a lot of different things going, but when you, we rode with Gussie yesterday, yep. and Gussie helped send us some awesome underwater visuals of some, some fry, some bass guarding them. That mid-depth range we saw it with Tyler Rivette as well. And some of these shots that we see on Mega Live, like when you're when you're panning up across a, a point, as you can see on the right side of the screen, how it gets how it gets shallower as you get up on that point, you're not going to necessarily necessarily see some of these fish because of how quick they're moving, how mm -hmm. fast they're chasing. But if you get your bait near them, obviously you can get in on the action. We saw Bryant Smith right across that point catch one. Jeff Gustafson does as well. But then when you start to get around uh, some different cover, whether it's dock posts or like we said with Tyler Rivette, that mid-depth range, you can start to maybe see some more activity and really get a good visual of your bait, how it's interacting. You can see up shallow with some of these, you can see the cover right there, I don't know, 20 feet out, and you see the fish suspending, you see his bait dropping towards them by whatever structure they're sitting under, and then you can see the hookup and the catch. And so some of those things, it's interesting utilizing it. For some of these guys we saw last year, uh, guys in Florida at the Harris Chain staying way off spawning fish and actually be able to see them kind of on the baits. It's going to make some of these pressured fish, some of these ones that you couldn't help but get right on top of in years past, be able to stay a little bit off of them, disguise yourself a little bit and be able to do that. So whether you're in six feet of water like it is right here, or you're in 27 feet of water, it's very cool to see the visuals, especially how we saw him win the Bassmaster Classic with dropping down on seemingly nothing, maybe a boulder, maybe maybe the bottom, and seeing fish rise up off of it, how well these fish actually are disguised in their habitat under the water. Like we mentioned, this was yesterday with Jeff Gustafson. Always ride with our defending classic champ in the event right after oh, yes. the classic. He's looking to try to break the tide and get inside that top 50, the last two classic champs. Hank Cherry in 2021 didn't make the cut the next event. Jason Christie, same thing last year. And you can see that, once again, five, almost six feet of water, shallow, whether that's a little bit of grass, some stumps, the dock poles, being able to see where that, and he might not even be looking directly at it, just fishing the cover, but you can see how he's pulling the fish right from underneath that dock. Pretty interesting visuals and what it's taught us. We've, we've learned a lot about bait presentation, how fish are uh, adjust to it, kind of how they react to colors, cadence, all of that in between. That was just a look at some of the Hummingbird Mega Live from yesterday. And Jeff Gustafson currently five ounces out of the cut line right now, so it's a it's a nail biter. How about a meaningful fish? Defending champ. <laughs> Brandon Card, he was 95th yesterday, 11 pounds, 15 ounces. He caught a seven pounder Whoa. moments ago. He's up to 19.7. He's inside the cut now, 47th. There it is, a Skeeter Boats Big Fish Alert. Brandon Card, seven pounder. Now, we had uh, Matt Robertson give us an eight pounder yesterday. It ended up being a 6.14, so Brandon Card's probably changed. a little closer. Yeah. yeah. And after his day one spot, Card had fallen to 33rd at AOI points and gaining these points, he's back up to eighth place right now. So it's meaningful even if some people supplant him and he misses the cut, he would have gained 40 points maybe.
Mm. Come here. Go over here. Gotcha. Four thirty eight. Do some resituate. Find his 3 6 there to help extend his lead, get rid of the 3 6. Put that good one in, in the boat. Ah. surprised by Matt Robertson's afternoon. Yeah. And really kind of watching Drew Benton's day, you know, for the most part, sight fishing a little bit of fry garters mixed in there. It's not it, because of the size of the males on this lake. It's not like you need to catch, you know, Ronnie, like a usual five fish sight fishing tournament, you want to catch five females, blah, 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 stuff like that. As big as the males are on this lake, he only needs a couple of those females, which he's done in the last hour, which is really similar to his day one. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's affirmative. Benton's last fish went in as a 4-6. He's up to 22-2, our big bag of the day. Mm. I'm gonna leave and these mugs are gonna start biting, but we gotta get going. We doubled to two pounds. We remind you that uh, first flight checks in at 20 minutes and Wade begins shortly after that, so right here on Bassmaster.com. About as long as it takes them to hustle up and get a bag from the line and bag their five and bring them in. Hey, Ronnie, do you have it lined up? How we're going to approach. Um, I know you're going to attack this with Sago, possibly. Connection with Koya really kind of I think I'm going to FaceTime him tonight, for, for sure. I absolutely, man. <laughs> I'd like to know how long it lasts. I know he gets my texts because he uses the graphics I make to promote him on live and posted them. So I know that Does I have the right respond? number. You know, no, he didn't do respond. <laughs> but but none of the other guys do either. And there's no language barrier there. So I'm not gonna. You know. You know. It's just a. 
No thanks, right. Ron. He's not the only appreciate one. you, man. Love you, bro. None yeah. of that. You know? That's all in Hunter. Play. I will say Hunter Shryock did. Thank you, Hunter. Appreciate you. Love you, too. <laughs> but yes, see, that's the number one priority work-wise this evening. Getting closer and closer to weigh-in time. Very crucial time for 50 of our anglers. 50 who make it in, get to fish tomorrow. Get to go to the weekend here on Lake Murray. Drew Benton just extended his lead by two, by a pound. A lead now of two pounds ahead of Kyoya Fujita. Shry out hanging in there. Jake Whitaker, what a great day. Two days he's had out here. Patrick Walters and the rest right on the cut line right now. Just in is Keith Combs. Just out is Chris Johnston. Mark Frazier, Clark Winland, and all the rest. The Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapalot. A little bit of fishing time left until the first flight checks in here at the Marathon Bassmaster Elite at Lake Murray. When this 23 schedule was announced last year, Lake Murray was announced. People were, they were cheering. I mean, it, it, the lake has enjoyed a great reputation the last couple of years. And oh man, it has lived up to it. The last time the elites were here, 11 years or 12 years ago, the winning weight was 61 pounds. We're already up to 45. We're not even through with day number two yet. Yeah, to see 43 pounds with Fujita and Drew Benton with 45 for a predominantly post-spawn situation. Obviously, still some pre-spawn bass. We've not seen a ton of them. To see those weights, man, that is, I had, honestly, have no words of how good this lake is right now. Unbelievable weights for a predominantly post-spawn situation. Just been amazing to watch out there today. That's a, another look at the lake there, all 41 miles of it, average of 14 miles across, and our six anglers, we've been the top six finishers from yesterday's weigh-in. In other words, say that again? all day. What did you say, 41 miles and 14 41 miles across? long and 14 across on average. So if Brian New ran 128 miles yesterday, <laughs> what is that, three, That's, seven hours of three hours day? of fishing yeah, time oh to, my to goodness. start with. So, that's a lot know. of running, man. That is. Sometimes that's, that's the plan, I guess. David Gaston just got into our top 10 at 10th, 18 and a half today. And Matty Wong, over 20 pounds on the day. Up to 17th from the 50s. 60, 66th. Patrick Walter's been a little quiet the last couple hours. Yeah, he has had a, definitely a slow afternoon. Good morning. Tommy, good I've been yeah, very, yeah. just very, very, very early. Who do you like to win this? You know, it's, it's like I said this morning, is this going to be Drew Benton's time? And, uh, <gasps> man, I tell you what. And, and of course, tomorrow's going to change things. And especially it's going to take a little, little bit of a, uh, well, it's going to take a little more out of you to find and locate a big, big female on the bed, which he was able to successfully do. Uh, don't hesitate to put a topwater bite. You know, I know he caught him in marinas and it was sure. different at Travis, but I mean, if yeah, he's, he's just been doing a lot of topwater and walk it, I mean, all day, like he's not yeah. opposed to that. It's going to be close, whatever it is, I think. What do you think, Z? Yeah. 
I think Fujita and Whitaker stand out right now, but I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Davey. I think you gotta get by Patrick Walters. I, I, he was sure. he was licking his chops for the the weather that's coming, mm -hmm. and and I think he's banking on his big day to be that's tomorrow. Fishy right here. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow or Sunday someone that's in contention catches it like a 25 pound bag and and. Change. We saw it on day one, but like yes, as you get yes, to the weekend, yes, someone in eighth yes. is going to catch 25 and be uh oh, yes. actual consideration. We haven't talked about Sunday much. Z, when the spawn is in this stage right now and you're in the aftermath of a front going through, what does that do? I, no, I don't like. Yeah, here's the thing. There's obviously when we got to see this, there is obviously a lot of three to four pound males that are up, and I think those are obviously still going to be accessible, but man we're gonna dip down to, i think tomorrow night we're gonna get into the high, high 40s low 50s that does not dictate a pile of bloated females coming up you know they may championship sunday afternoon but for folks who haven't been with us for the last couple of days it's been real interesting to hear how the the spawn works differently here they spend so little time comparatively with other Yes. Other lakes spawning in the in the, in the process of spawning. It's it's a shorter window. It's a smaller window. Like they kind of go up there, do their job, and then get back out and start feeding. That's yeah. what we got to see off the template a couple weeks ago, and definitely what Drew Benton said. You almost got to kind of get lucky, and what he said this morning is fall on a couple of those Easter eggs of those females because they are <laughs> they're not going to hang up there very long. Mm -hmm. Timing such a big deal here. Of course, it is everywhere. But I think it's just, you know, obviously Fujita has something going on that we are not seeing with other competitors oh, yeah. and pretty much has caught him early yesterday, caught him late today, and have basically has that all to himself. Which is scary. Yeah. Well, I think he's our dark horse mm -hmm. for winter, for sure. Drew Benton just surveying for tomorrow and today. Is there one a big one? I think he's just up here. picking up by rights you'd think the catching would be picking up and there he is Fujita with one on right now oh big big fast big fast Four, three. Yes. Half 
upgrade near, near to that and get him within ounces oh, of the lead wow. again. Yeah, he's going to be a handful come Sunday. Yeah. Like I said, the overwhelming he, pick for a winner he really is, is going to be Fujita. I think I said. He is scary, maybe. scary good, scary good. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to FaceTime him with you tonight, Ronnie. We could do it, yeah, a three-person yeah. FaceTime. To yeah, really Zoom call. I'm sure, sure he'd love to kill some time with you and I on a Friday working on tackle. For sure. <laughs> hey, we should, we should sick it? Dave Mercer on yes. him. He, this is the only time that he openly has to speak to, on the to mic, you know? You up that, leaderboard. that is a good point. Um, and get rid of that three-pounder that we got. Just can't have you. Just can't have a small fish here. So we're gonna keep plugging away. Throw this chopo. Throw a little general around some docks. And uh, I think this evening bite right before check-in could could get good. Once again, we remind you that big things are possible tomorrow for anglers who make it. Does not make it any easier to fish in though, does it? <laughs> big things possible tomorrow. Making that top 50 so important. I'm gonna read you the names of the 10 that are out of that 50 right now. 51st, Chris Johnston, Mark Frazier, Jeff Gustafson, Clark Winlet, Justin Hamner, Kobe Krieger, John Sukup, David Fritz, John Cruz and Greg Hackney. All of those hoping to break through somehow and have a chance tomorrow, Z. Yeah, and it's fair to say, really looking at the fish catches yesterday and today, a lot of the anglers praying for wind. And then there's a few anglers like Drew Benton, not so much yeah. wanting wind. This one is setting up as one of the most interesting tournaments of this short season so far, but it is a, gonna be a very diverse and dynamic event. Big front coming in tomorrow, gonna shift things around. But uh, one thing to be said, this lake right now is firing on all cylinders. Hard to actually believe Greg Hackney said it was tougher fishing than a lot of, a lot of anglers thought on day number one. Oh my goodness, there's so many great moments today. So much action all day long. The weigh-in starts at 3 p.m. right here on Bassmaster.com. Tomorrow morning, we will show up at 8 a.m. Eastern time on FS1 and have three hours of coverage for you there. The coverage will then switch back here to Bassmaster.com. But uh, Dave Mercer getting ready to crank it up over there and you gotta be in the top 50. Yeti hot seat. Drew Benton, of course. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was most enjoyable. We look forward to more of the same tomorrow. We'll see you then.